Hello, how's it going? Um, this is George. Um, you know me, a uh, former welterweight uh, champion of the UFC. Uh, but tonight, I um, want to talk to you uh, not about the, the fighting or nothing like that, you know. Um, this one's for my lady out there. <laughs> Hey, baby, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> you ever wondering how you can get with a good-looking guy like me, you know, who uh, can throw a super Superman jab, you know, and uh, just look really impressive in his performance um, against such athletes like uh, Mataran <laughs> and uh, Matt Hughes? <laughs> uh, well, uh, hey, baby, hey, uh, all that uh, to the side, man, you know, it's a new thing out, you know, called the uh, 1-800-DATE-MMA. Uh, <laughs> you can uh, call to uh, talk to a really cool guy like me, you know, uh, maybe they're not as good looking, <laughs> you know, because I wear uh, really good earring on the weekend when I'm in the club, you know, <laughs> popping bottle. But uh, maybe I can uh, show you a good time, maybe I can uh, take you down, you know. <laughs> We can go uh, double leg, you know. <laughs> I'm pretty good at that one, you know. Um, we got all kind of guy here, though, uh, ready on standby, you know. Uh, not just myself, you know. Live MMA fighter on the phone waiting to talk to that special girl. We have uh, some uh, current uh, MMA fighter on the line, you know. Yeah, hello? Yeah, this is, uh, this is Joe Hill. Yeah, Joel Romero. Hey, baby, how you doing? Yeah, you like to... Uh, what do you like to do? Oh, you just have this. Uh, yeah, ready to show you a good time. Maybe you can hang out with me on the weekend. Uh, hey, baby, you like a uh, bad boy? Yeah, I'm a bad boy, baby. A bad boy, you know what I do. You know what I like to do? I like to... I like to sit down on a stool with it. Everybody get mad. Yeah, is that the turn you want, buddy? Yeah, baby. Yeah, the turn you want. Yeah, I'm a bad boy. I like to sit on the stool. Maybe I save a little room next to you on my stool. Yeah. We can do that. I got a little bit of extra room on my stool. I don't care what they say. We don't have to get up. No, baby. We don't have to get up. Baby, just not sassy. No, baby. It's all good. No, it's... It's room for two on my stool, baby. Yeah. Yeah, just, just on sexy, mommy. Mommy, tu, tu amo, te, te amo. Yes, mommy, yes. Extraño, mommy. Sí, yes. No, it's room for two on my stool, baby. Always, always room for two on my stool. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, some... Um Older uh, MMA fighter on the line. Maybe you're into that thing, you know. Thanks for calling in, sweetheart. You're talking to Don Fry, most badass man on the planet. Probably know me from kicking ass and taking names, being a few slug feds, tipping back a few whiskeys. Yeah, wait, no, don't interrupt me. Man's talking. Now you can speak. I'm pretty sure you know a little about me. Let me learn a little about you. All right. Riding horses, liking it. You go hunting. Sounds like my type of girl. And you, you do MMA? I, are you fucking kidding me? What kind of fucking shit do you lie on through this line? God damn it. Honey, you need to get yourself an apron, get behind the fucking kitchen, make me a pot pie. Um, don't ever call and ask for me. Uh, yeah, we got uh, all kind of uh, internet guy uh, waiting to uh, take your call. And, you know, we got the other guy, you know, who like to, uh, uh, you know, nobody remember. But, uh, hey, baby, maybe you're into that thing, you know, I don't know. We got that kind of guy here, too. Thank you for calling Data MMA. Mr. Carlos Newton, how you doing, sweetheart? Yeah. Yeah, I, Carlos Newton, I, I used to be a, a fighter. I, yeah, I really was a fighter. You never really heard of me? 
I fought for pride. I got kneed in the face by Anderson Silva. I, I fought in the USC. I was, I was a welterweight champ for a while until I got slammed on my head by Matt Hughes. Oh, you know Matt. So, well, I was the one he slammed on his head and he took my belt. You still don't remember me, huh? Oh, well, all right. Uh, okay. Here, what's your number? I'll, I'll, I'll get a YouTube video and I'm gonna text you that video. And let's, and then, hello? Hello? Damn it, that's the third one that's hung up on me. I swear to God. Live MMA fighter on the phone waiting to talk to that special girl. That's 1 800 Date MMA. So sit up there, baby. And uh, just in case uh, you're kind of a girl who uh, doesn't look tight, you know, we gotta. Uh, Got a guy over here on the line for you too. Hey. <laughs> yes, hello, buddy. Yes, no, yeah, this little buddy, Kirishin. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, thank you. I know I sound sexy. That's not. Th it's not use words like that, buddy. Um, you know about my number one, buddy. You know I like to do. No, I don't touch that area, no, buddy. Hey, listen, I pray with my buddy Jesus. That's my number one, buddy. That's my number one thing, buddy. What's your number one thing, buddy? Oh, n n no, that's no, that's not pray, buddy. That's not praying. You can't do that with Jesus in the room, buddy. Yeah, no, I don't know, babe. That's uh, too too much information, buddy. Listen, you need to pray, pray with me for our buddy Jesus. He pray over you because you sound that's dirty, buddy. No, we don't talk like that, buddy. Let's let's pray to Jesus right now, buddy. Jesus. Pray over this buddy on the phone, buddy. She she using bad language, buddy. She tell me she wants to do crazy thing with my body, buddy. Pray for her, buddy. Let's pray together, buddy. So call. Hey, don't hesitate, you know, because uh, maybe some girl uh, say, Hey, George, <laughs> come over here and uh, hit you a uh, single leg kick down me. And I'm like, hey, baby, uh, my knee is not uh, work so good right now. I'm in a rehab. But, uh, you know, maybe I can uh, come your way, show you a good time, you know. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, give us a call, though, you know. 1-800-DATE-MMA. <laughs> That's 1-800-DATE-MMA. Uh, you know, not that word. That's a good word right there, man. <laughs> but you can uh, get with a good-looking guy like me, man. Just call that number, man. And uh, tell them George sent you. Eh, you get a uh, George special. <laughs> take care of me, lady. <laughs> hey, who's that girl who's not calling for the MMA fighter? Tell your friend about us. Live MMA fighter on the phone waiting to talk to that special girl. Our operator are standing by. Data MMA is not a real number. These are not the voices of the actual fighters, nor are these the thoughts or opinions of the actual fighters. The views and opinions expressed here are purely those of the commentators of the show and no one else. Thank you, and enjoy. G-Loaded calls MMA Podcast. Going back to drinking beer and eating true up. There you go. Hack it off is the best exercise you can have. There's pleasure in their workout. UFC clamming in your windows, snatching your people up. If they made basketball illegal, it wouldn't even bother me. I don't, I don't like other sports. They're boring to me. Everything else pales in comparison to the excitement of mixed martial arts fighting. Oh, 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 oh. I will be successful. I will dominate. I come from, you know, people like that get slapped. In my opinion? Oh, Why is that? Because I said so. Because I'm going to put those hands on you worse than that dude with mother kids up in the state. Once again, we are underway. Guys, guys, we are ready to go. We are live and recording. Uh, what's going back on? Uh, episode motherfucking eight. Loaded Joe's MMA podcast. We're going to hop right into this shit. We got a... Uh, 
hardcore kid, uh, Manny, uh, the big homie, Newton, we're having on the show. Uh, let's give him a call real quick, man. I'm so excited. He was one of my like top three picks last year, right? Yeah. For for in, in the season. What was, your pick, what was your pick this season? Man, number one was Liam McGarry. But in all fairness, I'm going to tell uh, – I feel like slammed. I have to tell Emmanuel Newton. But in all fairness, I strongly regretted the decision after I saw the countdown video. Strongly. I know a guy <laughs> I know a guy who strongly regretted that decision. Guess who it was? This guy, did you just drink my beer? Drink you beer. fucking asshole. Let me call Emmanuel Newton to calm me hey, down. Man, I opened it for you. Might as well drink it. I'm going to call Emmanuel Newton to calm me down, <laughs> dude. This is fucking yeah, bullshit. Right. It's mine, motherfucker. I can't. I can't take another. I'm sorry, but the person you can't called take is a right voice there. mailbox. He just texted. He just he texted. Just texted you to call him. Oh, He's how, his calls right now. How he, sad is this day? Uh, anyways, okay, so we got Manny Nude coming on. We got Mike O'Neill coming on after him. We got Matt Jones on this episode. This episode is Amazing. stacked up like a gangbang. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, I don't know what else to say about that. Don Miller, you eating some French fries and sushi? What a fucking combination that is! Is that? Do you feel? Do you feel pretty American right there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where's my beer? American America. <laughs> yeah, that beer. That beer tastes weak. My my taste buds are gone. I've been drinking whiskey and cokes all day. Damn man, bro. Woke up. I woke up like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do we have in the news? Uh, uh, while we're waiting for the big homie to to get at us. Uh, what do we have in the news? We got UFC on Fox tomorrow. Tomorrow. Four, 15? 14? Something? It's a team. Something. <laughs> <laughs> it's something like that. Uh, got, 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 got that shit going on lock. Going to see my boy Machida. Hell yeah. Rock hold a rock hold. What? <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry, man. Sorry. I had to, throw, I had to do that one. Um, so gonna see him do that. Gonna uh, what else are we gonna see, man? We're gonna, Paige Van Zandt. We're gonna see the hottest fight in yeah. women's MMA ever since maybe Misha Tate, Ronda Rousey, but like Misha Tate is not. I don't. No, I, I think she's yeah, really. Yeah, I, 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 I like. I, I think I, she's I, good I like looking, she's but I think banging body, really banging body. Oh my god! Get rid of the nose. This. The, <laughs> <laughs> It's not that bad, but I can get it. Oh, hang on. Big homie's calling. Uh-oh. He's going to spin it back to you, man. <laughs> hello? Hey, hello. Yeah, man. Man, we just keep going. We just keep going left and right, man. I, I, I call you. I, I was just missing out on your calls and stuff. God damn it. Uh, it's all good. It's all good, uh, Manny. It's all good, man. Uh, this is uh, Blake, Money Blake Weather with the Loaded Joe's MMA Podcast. Uh, we got the crew here. We got my boy, uh, John Miller. Let me, let me take you around the... Around the ring, real quick, of who's all here, man. Appreciate you calling in. Uh, got my boy John Millie. John, say hi, real quick. What's up, Manny? This is John. Uh, over here, we also got our uh, homeboy Jordan. He wants to say hi. Got my boy JV. JV, say hi, real quick. What's up, man? Your man, have a pleasure having you on the podcast. No, thanks, gentlemen. Sorry, sorry. Couldn't get to on and get back to you guys. All good, bro. We we, uh, we got it worked out. The universe uh, provided us a way, and you know what? We got you on, <laughs> man. You know how that goes, man. <laughs> Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> well, without further ado, I want to hop right in here real quick, Manny, because you know what? You were actually – I'm going to put this – I'm going to put it like this, man. We, we have a fantasy MMA league. Uh, last year, you were my uh, – I, 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 I feel like I got to be up front with this since we're having you on the podcast. You were my top three pick last year. You scored me 200-plus points. Let's start from there real quick. Spinning back fist, Joey Beltran – uh, submitting a guy, Linton Vassell, walk us through those wins, man. You were you look pretty phenomenal. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. I think you kind of had a game plan walking in there. Just kind of let's go, let's go from there real quick. I know you always, you know, you talk about the fights. I hear you all the time in interviews. Let's kind of skim through that and we'll move on forward, man. Uh no, yeah, man. I uh, you know, I just I tend to think on like a different, I guess, a realm of consciousness. You know, I don't train very hard. You know, obviously, if everybody saw it, I just tested positive for marijuana after my last fight. If you guys didn't know, you know, I, I, smoked, 
I smoked sometime, and I was smoking like, you know, three days out before that fight, you know, and, uh, you know, it wasn't very smart, you know, I thought I had everything uh, under control for me, but it just goes to show that I can train, you know, two weeks for a fight and still, and smoke weed and still go out and, and put on a, and still fight, you know, five rounds and still win fights, um, you know, but I've learned from that, you know, I've learned, uh, you know, that you can't take away from any man's hard work. So, uh, so especially after this Liam fight, you know, I just, my mind just wasn't in it, you know. I just feel like I've been doing uh, too much on that other side of the spectrum, as I like to say, you know, dwelling more uh, on, on, on my spiritual side, you know, my physical side. So now I'm going to make my way back over to that uh, that physical side. And, uh, and you know, what got me the belt, which was the hard training and the perseverance and the discipline is what's going to be back in play for this next time around. God damn it right, dude. I like to hear that from you, man. And, and yeah, being honest with you, kind of going – Going forward from there, yeah, I mean, you know, we know you smoke some weed. It's all good. Every, everybody here smokes some weed. Not me, though, but, but I, I, I'm, a, I'm I'm very much an alcoholic. I feel you where, where you said, you know, you can kind of get away with smoking weed and training because I get away with drinking alcohol and doing a podcast, and it works yeah, out just yeah. great. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's what it's about. It's about, um, it's about doing what works for your job, you know. My job is fighting, so... You know, I, I got away with it for a little bit, but uh, I think, like, you know, me in the universe, I believe that um, I wasn't going to grow anymore there. So, you know, the universe told me, let's, let's go back towards the flesh week way, you know, which is the training and putting that time. Granted, things are still going to be easier for me, I think, than uh, a lot of other fighters because of my mindset and because of uh, the higher state of consciousness that I came into in that time when I was training for two weeks and smoking weed and not eating. Um, you know, it made me much more uh, powerful, I think, in my mind. So now that I can go back to what won me the championship and the hard cha- training like everybody else does, I think uh, it will show de- definitely will show more uh, fruits and uh, pay more dividends in my uh, in my career. Damn right, dude. Good, well put, man. Well put. And I know John Miller. He's, <laughs> my boy John Miller likes to do a lot of meditation. I know he's got a lot of questions for you coming up real quick. But kind of moving on from there, yeah, we saw the loss to Liam McGarry. Again, going to be honest with you, you were in my top three pick in my fantasy league. Last season, this season, my top first pick, not going to lie, please don't hate me, it was Liam McGeary, but I picked him really uh-huh. early. Please don't hate me. Here, hold me out. <laughs> hey, hang on, hang on. I saw the countdown video, and then I strongly regretted making that decision because I saw how ferocious and fierce you fucking were when, when, on the countdown video. Be, I, I was like, oh, no, I should have picked Manny because, dude, you looked strong in that fight. You looked good, even though it went to decision. It arguably, uh, it could have gone. I think it could have gone either way. Could have been a draw. Yeah, just, a, just depends on how subjective you were, man. I'm gonna start off the show that that honest. You know, I don't, I don't know another person who would be that honest with you, kind of coming up front. Um, walk us through the fight real quick, briefly, and then we'll kind of go from there on what's forward. Uh, how did you feel in that fight, man? You didn't go in there with another hundred hundred calorie protein shake, did you? No, 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 not at all, you know, but, uh, but my mind, I think one thing that uh, I've, I've uh, done, you know, through my meditation and, uh, you know, and through, uh, you know, my prayer and just having a deeper understanding of myself, not anybody else, you know, but myself, you know, my fingerprints, my DNA, you know, but my eye pupils, you know, we're all different in these areas. So you make your connection to your, your inner self, uh, you know, you can, uh, you can do great things. Like things where most people would be like, no, it's never going to work. And then it works. And you're like, so now what, you know, it's like, he said I was wrong, but I, I, you know, but I felt it on the inside. So, so, uh, so you know, so I feel that, uh, like I said, I became much stronger there, you know, through the meditation and stuff. But, uh, but that's what really, uh, you know, really uh, kind of calmed my mind. Because I remember right before I walked out, before the fight, you know, I had the big screen in front of me, you know, that I lifted up. And, you know, I was like thinking to myself, okay, we're getting ready to go fight for our belt. And I had no, like, like aggression, you know. I was kind of like, yeah, all right, let's do it. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I should be like more hyped, you know, but it was just kind of, I was kind of like whatever. So I think your meditation is stuff, sometimes you can, um, like I say, you, you can do too much of anything. You can drink too much water. You can eat too much food. You know, you could, uh, you, you know, you do too much meditation. So I think, um, because of that, I, I really calmed my mind. So when I went into that fight, I didn't really have that killer instinct as much, you know, I was just kind of, you know, I, I went into his world. I played into his game, you know, uh, you know, like, and, and I didn't really fight a very tactical fight. But at the same time, I think that that still people have felt by him, you know, that I can get out of all those triangles and all those on bars, you know, and be just fine. You know, I think right. that's just going to put a lot of, uh, that's going to put a lot more fear and a lot more like, fuck, man, how do you finish this guy, you know, and fight, you know. So, um, you know, so I think every, I'm a big believer in everything happening for a reason and learning 
from uh, from the consequences of your of your decisions, you know. So you know, yeah, I lost my fight, but it's because I wanted to smoke and I wanted to train for like a week and a half and go off of the energy of my spirit, you know. But if I would have never would have went, if I would have won that fight, then I would have kept doing the same stuff, and who knows how much worse it would have been down the line. So I went through it. I learned, you know. I grew from it, you know. Uh, you know, I stayed on the side of the spectrum for like three fights. You know, one on three fights, and then I think with that last fight with the universe's way of saying, okay, time to come back into a new way of thinking and let's grow to something different. So here I am now. Dude, that's fucking, that's real, dude. Yeah. That is real right there, man. That's raw, rugged, and real. Actually, that's that's actually what we're all about here at Loaded Joe's, man. I think that fits in perfect. Uh, and you you mentioned, you know, meditation. I mean, I hear you in all your interviews, man. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know sugarcoat it, man. It sounds like a lot of people are like kind of like. Oh, all right, whatever, you know, Manny, Manny meditates, but, like, we're definitely into that shit, man. Yeah, they don't understand, bro. Like, I've meditated before, like, you get into some shit, man. You, you see some shit, you experience some shit, you, yeah. you're on a different, like, it just, it's, it's hard to put into words, man, because you, you just have this other, like, under, level of understanding that you can't explain to anybody who hasn't done it. It's just like trying to tell somebody about mixed martial arts, you know, taking a leg kick or taking a punch, and they don't understand it because they've never trained that. Yeah. That's what I feel like a lot of people when you when you talk to them about it, like they just don't understand. So I, I definitely appreciate you know that side of you you know kind of going in on that. Um, w- w- kind of walk us through, man. Ha- has that always been a, a part of your of your training? Has that always been a part of your life? Was it something that's kind of new over the last few years? When did this really start? And what fight do you think you really started? you started noticing the change when you do meditations and, 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 you know, get into the other realms of shit, man. Uh, you know, it really started for me. Um, I call it the uh, awakening. Cause it wasn't just me. There were other brethren that I could call them other guys that I'm a uh, training guy, guys that I train with, you know, now, granted, uh, you know, we all came to different levels of, uh, new consciousness, you know, of enlightenment. And I think it was about two years ago. That, uh, you know, that we just, ah, about for like a year and a half, a little more than that, that, uh, you know, that we started figuring, like, man, you know, we started looking at everything, the, the big picture of everything, you know, that's our other dimension, you know, that is proven, you know, that we do have a magnetic freaking field around us, right. you know, that's proven, you know, that's our aura, and people don't understand this, you know, like I said, we use, we have 10 fingers, 10 toes, and most we can use 10% of our brain, if I walk 10 yards from anything, my eyesight immediately changes, you know, these are the mechanics of the universe. It's proven. You know, they pull the star from the heavens and the star was made up of the same makeup as our DNA. You know, except we're carbon. You know, we're six protons, six electrons, six neutrons, and that's physics. And then you look at the Bible and then it says 666 six, six is the mark of the beast, which Sign represents man, the yeah. flesh too. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it says the sign of the like, Bible, man. Good point. No, it's just kind of like, how can these things say that they're completely and totally separate, yet have the same exact freaking like, outcome and the same exact way of explaining the flesh? It's like, okay. And then I, you know, I went even deeper on that. So, so you just let's look at, uh, you know, through the physics, you know, protons, neutrons, electrons. There's your trinity there. Let's look at uh, Hinduism and, uh, and, uh, and Buddhism, mind, body, spirit. There's your trinity there. You know, and then you look at uh, Christianity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There's your trinity there. You know, all these religions say they have nothing in common, but yet they, they all have the same mechanic. Mm-hmm. And there's another thing that people don't understand. There is a universal law that every law comes off of, you know? You know, the way the universe runs is the way all runs, laws run, but just in different dimensions, you know, they're through different thoughts. You know, and this is not something we've been connected to because, one, because the, the people on top don't want us to know these things yeah. because they will make us much more powerful, much more stronger. You know, we, would, we wouldn't so much need everything and depend on them for everything. You know, but, but you know, it's the program that we fell into. So it's not like you have an uprising and get upset. It's just understand it. Understand that you are something so much greater. They can't conduct you and control you everywhere you go. So grow for yourself. Understand yourself deeper. Yeah. And know that there's something so much greater out there than just the, the thoughts of our mind that they give to us, you know, and the schooling that they give to us, you know, it is something much greater, you know. So, uh, you know, it's crazy that the same atom that dwells behind our sun, powering our universe, is the same atom that is deep in our DNA, deep in our mitochondria, you know. Yeah. It's like, how, how, is, how we have the same atom or made of stardust? You know, you're trying to tell me I'm not supposed to pay attention to my dreams, my deja vu, my coincidences, you know. It's like, uh, you know, it, 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 should, it makes too much sense for it not to be real. Yeah, but I mean, but I really saw this lightning after I knocked Mo out the first time. You know, um, well, after I knocked Mo out, you know, I had a, you know, I had a, um, you know, just uh, visions. You know, something told me, you know, don't worry, it's not going to go past the first round. You know, 
And then I had a dream the night before that I knocked him out. And then, like, four other people on my camp also had the same dream that I knocked him out. And then it just, you know, I went out there first round and knocked him out. So this is when, this right. is when I started saying, okay, there's something much deeper that's going on inside of me and that's going on around me that I need to connect to, you know, and, uh, and it's just, it's, a, it's coming to higher levels of consciousness. It's not saying go to this religion or go to that religion. I believe this and believe in that. It's like just knowing that we are so much greater than they make us out to be. We use 10% of our brains. Is that you're trying to tell me that there isn't something so much bigger out there that we can connect to to make us, why do we only use 10%? Can somebody explain that to me? Why can't I use more, you know? And it's because it's, these are the things they're not going to give to you. And if you do learn about these things, they're going to be through like, you know, years of college or, you know, like, but by that time, you're on the same exact program they want you on, you know, same exact program, it's easier to control you because, you know, the more money you make because of the schooling you have, the more programmed you are because that's the system that they wanted you to be in, you know what I mean? Damn, yes. I completely yeah. understand what you're saying, man. This shit, yeah, yeah. this shit we talk about just like offhandedly off the podcast, man. Yeah. This is the same shit, and it's, 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 yeah, it's awesome to hear there's somebody out there who definitely like goes into it like you do. Especially a fighter. Yeah, I mean, and somebody wanting to come out and admit that they they do such a thing because, you know, instead of being blasphemized like, you're a fucking crazy person. Like, nah, man, I'm on some real shit. Well, what like, is crazy? You're the crazy you know, what person. is crazy, you know? <laughs> yeah. what, what, what is crazy, you know, all these words that we have, you know? It's crazy. I've been doing uh, I've been doing a little more uh, research on, uh, you know, uh, the older the older English language, you know? And it's taken away so many words that, 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 you know, that meant, you know, many things, you know, that we have all these different words for now. You know, that why did you take away this one word that would explain fear, worry, concern, all that stuff? And then yet make fear, fear, worry, and concern, and, and doubt, and all these other words that all mean the same thing. You know, it's because uh, because uh, it, it, we've evolved in the, uh, into the improper direction. We've evolved into the direction, which is more simple. You know, and that's what it says. We don't believe in the Bible, but I mean, it says in the Bible where God will never give you more than you can bear. All it represents the universe. Right. The universe will never give you more energy than you can handle. So if you're not able to handle this new enlightenment, then you're going to stay in that lower-level program that they made for us to connect to because that's where you're supposed to be, you know? Now, yeah. when you connect to when you connect to a higher level of consciousness, you go through things. You go through thoughts, you go through dreams, you go through you go through things where you're just like, Am I going fucking crazy? Am I going insane? The only reason why you think you're crazy and insane is they made this word up, you know? Right. And, you know, uh, everything everything we know from from all the words that we've been taught to all the ways that we think has been given to us from somebody else. It's and it wasn't just us, it was our great 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 grandparents, you know, it's been going on since like you know, the late 1700s. After Somebody the made that Award, concept after we, up and, and then they yeah. want you to follow it type thing. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, we don't understand how our, even our DNA is programmed through vibrations and frequencies and all this shit. You know, because we're protons, neutrons, electrons. We're no different, you know, we're no different than, uh, you know, than a computer. I mean, me and my boy were talking, you know, and I was like, okay, I, I have the, the, the refrigerator, right? If I were to take the refrigerator and throw it, let's say throw it into a volcano, because volcanoes are what makes planets, I mean, uh, makes life. Volcanoes are what makes islands and makes land, right? Right. That's where, you know. So if I were to throw that refrigerator into a volcano, it would turn back to molten lava. And so that refrigerator would be able to make life? You know, they take, take the refrigerator, because it turns back to molten lava, it turns both back to the earth, you know, and it's proton, neutron, electron. It, when, it, when it breaks itself down and it, and it dries up to make, uh, make an island or make land, grass can grow from this refrigerator? That makes no sense to me, you know? If they say, how, 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 is that, how is that possible? But yet you're going to tell me that I can get sick and I can die from, from all this, these stupid, frivolous like, things that they made up to keep. We, 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 we make ourselves sick. We manifest all these things on ourselves because we believe it because that's what our parents believe. And that's what our parents' parents believe. So it's handed down to us before we were born. And people don't think to look at this and understand this because it takes a higher level of consciousness in order to be able to see these things, you know? Right. Dude, that's fucking real, dude. Like, kudos to kudos to you, bro. Like, next time you come to Austin, we're hanging out with we're hanging out with the homie Manny Newton, man. That's what the fuck is happening, dude. We have some deep ass conversations, man. Uh, I'm gonna pass it over to John real quick. I know he's got some questions. He, he really digs on this stuff. Um, hang on, real quick, man. Hey, what's up, man? This is John again. Hey, John, you doing, bro? I'm doing fine. Hey, dude. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, like, uh. I mean, you pretty much blow, like, blew me away with, you only trained for less than two weeks for a championship fight, and you just was steadfast in your spirit, like, that. I think that will inspire a lot of people, because a lot of people, uh, you know, like you say, if you don't believe in yourself, you're not going to go very far, you, 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 you no, yeah, no, yeah. yourself uh, to 
just being, you know, being in one experience and stuff like that. Um, but for you, um, like, how, how, like, what started your spiritual journey? Like, uh, that, that's what I want to know. What was it like a, an event in life, or was it like your fellow brothers, like you said, that we you know kind of talked to you into uh, trying this out? Um, you know, man, it was yeah, it was it was a combination of just like dreams. Uh-huh. You know, I, I had a I had a dream, and uh, and uh, you know, just in you know, a one day, me and my brothers, we just all woke up. It was actually New Year's Eve, uh, exactly. You know, and uh, and we just woke up, and, uh, and on that day, we just uh, we all just started coming into this enlightenment. You know, and it was just like, and just kind of like, it was just kind of like a, like a domino effect, you know, and it just and things that never made sense to us before because we were never thought to think about them. You know, all of a sudden, just made sense, and we were just so we started like looking a little deeper, and like and not just in like books or like you know, even when you read books and stuff, you know, it, it, it's somebody else's perception of life, it's somebody else's perception of understanding of things. So they even tell me we even with the Bible. You know, it's like, you know, or, or, you know, the Quran or any, any religious book, they all have a lot of truth to them. No, but if you yeah. don't connect to them on a higher level of consciousness, then you're going to receive them yeah. for religion, you know? Right. And religion is meant to be controlled. Religion is meant to be, you know, uh, formulated and, 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 and conducted, you know, in a way that, uh, you know, that, that's going to control people. You know, so, so, but when you have a higher state of consciousness, you can look at these things and be like, hmm. I see this, but I understand it because I understand how it connects to this, this, and this. So because I know, oh, I, like it says, it's not a part of that, but again, it makes a lot of sense as that does, that there's something so much deeper than just what they're telling me in this book. You know, and that's why I think that, uh, you know, just uh, be on an open mind and, uh, and, and, and knowing, almost knowing the world around you and being able to look and be like, hmm, that's like the same mechanics as this. Yet, yet, it's, it's not the same. Like I said, the six protons, six electrons, six neutrons, which makes us carbon, and then six, six, six being the mark of the beast in the Bible, and then that represents, but yet they say they have nothing alike, you know? And yet, but yet they both represent, they're both explaining the flesh, you know? Yeah, it's, it's like, a, hmm. It's cool, yeah, reality, yeah. 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 It, I, so it's just, uh, so, yeah, so. Uh, sorry about that, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, no you know, like, I, I like the way you, you explain it, because for me, that, like, in my process, when I kind of started to uh, uh, wake up, um, I kind of was resentful towards religion. Uh, I'm slowly of beginning to, like, uh, heal that, you know, sense of betrayal and stuff like that. So, I mean, it, it, like, the way you explain it, I, honestly, that builds more bridges and makes people more interested in actually experiencing more spirituality than versus trying to look at uh, religion dogmatic and stuff like that so no yeah for sure i mean that's you know that's why they they, they made religion but also it says in the bible because i mean i re- I resort to the bible for a lot of my understanding because yeah. uh you know i was raised a christian you know my my dad was a pastor my dad dad was a pastor and when it comes down to it if you look at the secrets and all the prophecies that everything's falling into place the bible is the best way to explain it and then also all the religions all the big kind of religions like Muslim, like buddhism like hinduism they all came after you know Jesus Christ, but his name wasn't even Jesus when he was walking down there. His name was Yahshua Hamashiach, yeah, you know, which Yashua, means Jesus the Messiah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, yeah, you know. So, so, it's, uh, so it's like, so that right there, you know, it's just um, alone is uh, is showing you that uh, that that they have controlled, try to control us, you know, through religion by even changing the name, changing the name of the man. It's like you know, and they don't want to say the true name because it would connect us to a different frequency, which will uh, which, uh, open our mind to something else, you know. But at the same time, that's why it says in the Bible, I will never give you more than you can bear. But some people can't handle that frequency. So, so when so when people want to say, you know, like, well, they made up the word being Jesus is so wrong. It's like, no, the universe allowed them to make that word up because they knew your ass wouldn't be able to handle the real name, you know, because of the enlightenment it would bring you. So, um, so people don't understand this, and there is no bad. I explain, there is no bad. There is just learning. There just is, you know, like like when when uh you know when God, no, like when God came to to. You know, to, uh, to to Moses, and Moses was like, well, who are you? And he's like, I am who I am, you know? They say, why do you have to ask so many, like, so many answers and so many questions? It's like, oh, but wasted questions I think you answer because you want to understand them. It's like, so, the only understanding of yourself, a high state of consciousness, and then the way the answers should be answered for you will be given to you so that you can understand them and make your life better, you know what I mean? No, I, 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 I definitely experienced the same thing and all the secrets in the, the Bible um, that only people like us have actually learned or attained that uh, through meditation. But yeah, man, it was great talking to you. I wish we could, you know, uh, do this more often and for a longer time, but I'm going to hand it over to Blake, okay? Uh, okay? I love you. Keep continue growing, man. You know, like I say, like, I, real quick, I explained to people, man, that 
The universe is like a machine, okay? So, and like God, you know, you can say God or, you know, ah, Jesus, what do you want to call him? You know, he's he, he the conductor of the machine, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's what religion tries to do. It tries to have you connect straight to God or connect straight to God. It's like, no, you have to understand the universe first. You know, that's, what, that's why Aristotle was so great. That was yeah. why, that's why Da Vinci was so great. That's why Albert Einstein was so great. You know, that's why, you know, uh, you know, uh, Isaac Newton was so great because they and they understood the stars. They understood that that, that we all run on a, 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 a universe, universal relative law. You know, so it's like they understood that they were able to have a higher state of enlightenment. But you have to understand the stars and and, and come to grips with the understanding of like uh, you know that, that we we do come from stars. You know, we do run on the same frequency as the sun, and uh, you know the sun sends out thirty six billion vibrations like a, like a minute. You know. And a vibration is meant to wake something up, turn something on, mechanically connect to something. But the same atom that dwells behind the sun, dwells inside of us, what do you think those vibrations are going? The billions of vibrations. They're going to life on this planet, you know? Right. Whether it be a, the bug crawling on the ground or a human being freaking out work, you know? So it's like, when you can understand these things, then you, then that's when you come, the, uh, the year is able to pre out that religious stage of enlightenment and put you into the spiritual stage of enlightenment. For sure, for sure. Kind of going on this, man. This to some people might sound like randomness, but it's not. But you know what? It's a part of our. It's a part. I, I love everything you're saying. And right now, it's a part of a segment we call random ass questions. Random ass questions <laughs> segment. We just ask you 15 random ass questions. Could be your, what's your name? What's your what, what's the color of the sky? And we're gonna gonna go ahead and go hop into it. What's what's the theme song, Jordan? Random ass questions. Random ass questions. All right. Uh, real quick. All right. So we're gonna hop in here. Start the timer. Uh, first question. Favorite color. Green. Favorite movie? Oh, man. Um, damn, Saving Private Ryan. I love that movie. That was a good one. Favorite drink at the bar? Uh, goose and soda. Nice. Goose and soda. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, favorite food in the off-season when you can eat? Um, I, I, love, I love the Asian food, Japanese food, Thai food. Um, I love Mexican food too. I just, I'm, I'm a fan of food. But I really love seafood because I'm a pescatarian, so I'm after this to say sushi. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. John's a pescatarian too, man. Yeah. He told him the universe. There we go. Do it too. There we go. Connection, baby. Connection right there. All right. Fallon Fox or Cyborg Santos? Who has a bigger dick? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean,. I, I mean, I think that Fallon Fox, like, she looks she looks too good. And I've heard too many rumors about things, so I'm going to have to say she probably has a bigger dick. <laughs> nice. Uh, what animal is your warrior spirit? Um, I'm, I'm, believe it or not, I'm actually, I think it's your cross between a wolf and a rat. I'm like a rat because I can shrink and freaking out smart your ass, but like a wolf because the shit comes down, I can fucking take your throat up. Fucking crazy. Uh, country with the most beautiful women. You say, well, what country with them? Oh, um, Russia, man. Right. I went to Russia one time, and they were working hard, too, man. They'd be climbing over freaking rocks blown up in World War II and fucking high hills and shit. I'd be like, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny as fuck, man. Uh, country with the ugliest women. Oh, man. Um, probably like freaking, like, even like, like Ireland or somewhere. Like, this one, they're really going to try to, like, British, like, somewhere in the middle of Britain or something. <laughs> That's funny as fuck. Um, all right, uh, if your life was turned into a movie, who's playing you? Um, Samuel L. Jackson, man. It has to be Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Sam Jackson. <laughs> we're not even older than me. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. We're like me in like 30 years or something. <laughs> All right, uh, and uh, what's what's the movie rated? Uh, rated off, for sure, man. We got violence and, and, and all that good stuff. Got some sex in there. That's nice, man. Yeah, you got to have everything to make it a good movie, you know? <laughs> um, all right, uh, what season is the best season for some whoopee? Where, where's whoopee? What? <laughs> what? Fucking. Getting, that means fucking. Getting, oh, sex, sex? Oh, sex. Okay. Straight fucking. Um, <laughs> I would say, I would say, like, like maybe that early springtime, because it's not really starting at all yet, so it's still a little chilly, so you can still, like, so like come over here, you know? It's okay. You don't got to be all over here. It's a little chilly. Come cover with me, you know? <laughs> Nice. Yeah, but, yet, but yet it's not freezing to the point where you're just fucking unhappy, you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, hottest MMA fighter? Oh, man. Um, some hottest MMA about. fighter. Damn, that's a tough one. <laughs> you know, I, you know it's, 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 uh, she's going to but I'm going to have to go with my girl, Ashley Evans-Smith. I love that. She's oh, a yeah. good she's a good one. You know, uh, you know, she, you know, she, 
you know, so uh, so I'm not dealing with her because uh, she's an awesome, awesome chick. Very good looking chick. Ugliest MMA fighter. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's quite a few of them out there. <laughs> um, you know, it's crazy. I'm not, I mean, are you talking about women or are you talking about men? They're everybody in general. Anyone. Any, any MMA oh. fighter. There's men and women nowadays. Um, no, any other, um, <laughs> damn. I, you know, I don't really know. I mean, there's, I mean, there's not, there's a lot of ugly dudes out there too. I'll just say me just to save myself the trouble of like, <laughs> seeing one of these guys one day and be like, hey man, I'm just playing, you know? So you might know that was gonna make my Right, I gotcha. Um, what was your favorite cartoon growing up when you were a kid? Oh man, um, the cartoon that changed my life. I mean, I probably had to say like Ninja Turtles because it made me want to be a ninja. Fuck yeah. Power Rangers because it made me want to have like powers and be able to do shit that I could never probably never do. And uh, I say Voltron because you know Voltron, you know, Hell came yeah. together and made it yeah, the Voltron. universe, you know. Nice, nice, man. Well, that was random ass questions. That was our segment we always do on the Loaded Just podcast. Uh, real quick to to wrap everything up, Manny. It was a pleasure having you on. Hopefully, we can have you on in the future, man. Um, do you have any shout outs? Any uh, you know uh, people you want to give a shout out to? Any sponsors? Where can people find you, bro? Ah, uh, you know, I mean, just, I mean, I, the thing about me, man, I really don't have too much of a. I think that's another reason why like, I'm an organization and uh, don't like. Not a big fan of mine because who really follow my, my Twitter views. Like I said, they have my Instagram at newtonmail.com. You follow me on there. They have Facebook. Um, you know, uh, you know, it's one thing on my training partners, you know, everybody at the body shop, Antonio McKee, AJ McKee, Jesse Warriors, uh, uh, Brett Cooper, uh, damn, Bubba, Bubba Jenkins, uh, let's see what else we got. I mean, you know, just, I don't know, just all, all everybody's been supporting me since day one and, uh, you know, I keep on going and, uh, train harder. Fight smarter and uh, go out here and uh, just throw my next opponent, whoever it is. Nice, okay, nice, perfect. Uh, real quick, can we get a shout out from you uh, for the Loaded Joe's MMA podcast, bro? Yeah, what, what do you want me to say? Uh, just say, you know, this is, you know, Manuel Newton, you know, uh, and you're listening to the Loaded Joe's MMA podcast, man. What's it, what's it called, the MMA podcast? Yeah, it's Loaded Joe's MMA podcast because we get Loaded, loaded Joe's MMA podcast. After Joe's and, and it's a podcast. All right, Loaded Joe's MMA podcast. That's it. All right, uh, all right. What's up, everybody? It's Emmanuel Newton, and uh, you know, it's on here chilling out and uh, having some uh, deep conversation with my boys over at uh, Loaded Joe's MMA Podcast. Uh, keep on watching it and uh, keep on listening and uh, keep enjoying the fight. MMA, keep climbing, baby, because that's what we do. Damn right, dude. Yeah, appreciate yeah. that. Appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. Real quick, closing out, Manny. Do you got a, a fight coming up? Have they booked you with anybody, man? You're gonna go fuck up. I, I don't have any, gonna go I, fuck up Mo again with a spinning back fist. What's I mean, going down? I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't have. I don't have. You know, any, any dates yet. I mean, but I know they're signing new guys right now. I know. I know Phil just got Phil Davis just got signed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, I mean, I know they're signing some other guys. So you know, I think this this year is gonna be an interesting year. So uh, you know, just uh, wait now and just uh, seeing seeing what happens. Awesome, man. Fuck yeah. Uh, well, hardcore kid. Appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, next time we got we got to have you on here a little bit longer. Going. Do a bit more shit, man. I know John loves talking about shit like this. I love talking shit like this. And, uh, you know, it's just fucking fantastic fun, man. Uh, Want to wish you a great rest of the evening, man. Appreciate you for coming on. And, uh, yeah, we'll look out for you and uh, be cheering for you next fight, man. I'll be sure. Thank you, man. Have a good one. All right, you do the same, man. Appreciate All right. it. All right. All right. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Uh, that he's dope, dude. Dad, he's dude. fucking cool, man. Okay, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have boy um, we could, wait a minute, this is a fucking loaded podcast this episode. Gonna have our boy, gonna have our boy, Mike O'Neill, Canadian oh, badass, right, right. Canadian badass over here. Gonna have him uh, chop it up with him. Not even recovering. Not even a minute round break. Not doing shit. We're just hopping right back in here, dude. Uh, let me call him right now. Calling right now. I've never used Skype before. No, I haven't used Skype before. <laughs> Neither have I, man. <laughs> uh, what's going on? This is Mike O'Neill. It sure is. Mike, can you see me okay? I can't see where I'm seeing. Can you see me? Am I pointing to you? Can you see me pointing? Nope, I can see myself in the corner. Oh, wait, there's an option here. Oh, I just turned off the video. Well, shit. 
Now I'm back. <laughs> All good, man. I don't know how the fuck to use my Skype, but... Uh, that makes two of us. This is the first time I've used it. <laughs> uh, me too, man. Uh, but fuck it anyways. We're going to roll with it, man. How you doing tonight, bro? I can't complain. Let's hop right into it. Got a fight coming up, Mike O'Neill. Uh, who That's are you true. fighting? When are you fighting? Let's dive right into that, man. I'm fighting in uh, Calgary for Hard Knocks against uh, Aaron Gallant. Um, he's 6-6. Uh, six and six. He's had some pretty crappy fights, and he's had some really good fights. He's got the fastest UFC knockout. Uh, MFC knockout, sorry. And uh, should be a good fight. He's got a really oddly shaped head, so that's always <laughs> funny. Oh, that's about fuck. all I can tell you about, I guess. Fuck, fuck, fuck. fuck. Oh, my God. Hold on, man. I just spilled my beer. Fuck. God, Saw I that. Swear. Hang on real quick, man. How are you getting drunk off that? It's American light beer. Oh, man. I don't buy, I don't <laughs> buy that, that bullshit, dude. I don't buy that American bullshit, man. I don't drink Bud, Bud Light, Budweiser. I drink... Uh, this one's actually imported from uh, Germany uh, that I'm drinking. Uh, that's close to Canada, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I like Canadian whiskey. I had some Canadian whiskey earlier. Uh, that's, uh, that's the only that's kind I buy. I only buy aged whiskey, though, man. Like uh, this yeah. one, the one I had earlier was like a nine-year aged. Uh, yeah, I don't even drink. I haven't drank in like seven years. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, man! How do you live? Uh, sometimes I ask myself that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Very very enjoyably, I guess, but well, you got three kids. Uh, the drinking doesn't help with the training, and you know. Right, right. No, I understand, man. You know, it, not not every you know, you can't do it when you're fighting, man. Maybe one, maybe one day. Uh, you do train, so yeah, that was a, that's a good question, John Miller. So, how often do you train when you train? I know you got a you know day to day grind. Um, how often are you able to get it to get in there, man, and, and really do the damn thing? You know, when uh, you're you know you're training for a fight, man. It, it varies back and forth. I try to get at least three pad work sessions in a week because, uh, you know, pad work is really a good way to get my cardio back to a snuff. And then uh, I even do the dreaded CrossFit about twice a week, <laughs> get the muscle endurance up and going. Uh, I do power lifting about three to four times a week. And then uh, I get in my wrestling once a week, my, my uh, grappling about once or twice a week. So it's, it's, it's really just whenever I can fit it in. Gotcha. Man. I make it work. I got a really good gym downstairs. Like I got all the Olympic weights and all the bumper plates and stuff, so, so it works out good. That's your thing. Is that kind of what like got you in MMA? You're lifting weights one day, and then you're like, saw somebody kicking somebody. You're like, fuck yeah, I could fucking just knock his ass out, man. Is that kind of the? <laughs> is that kind of what happened, man? How did you get into it? That is like the greatest assumption I've ever heard. <laughs> that's what we so way to go punch someone in the face. <laughs> That's what we do, man. No, I was uh, I wrestled in high school. I wrestled in high school for about four years, and then I did it in a post-secondary school and crap. Like uh, I really only took college because I wanted to wrestle longer. <laughs> 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 then after uh, the wrestling was all said and done, we I started uh, doing powerlifting, and then from the powerlifting, got bored of that, and uh, started doing kickboxing and realized that kickboxing wasn't my forte yet and went back to the grappling and discovered submission grappling and from that I started doing the the stand up and stuff and then did my first amateur fight after about three months of training and uh, <laughs> won that fight and the fight after that and went on and on <laughs> damn dude so you did wrestling for what I mean your style is, is very submission based I mean easy transition for wrestling but like how the hell did you get into, like, doing shoot wrestling, that, you know, which is, like, pretty much almost like catch wrestling. We were talking about this. How the hell did you, like, to transition from that? Because they don't teach that, well, at least in our high schools over here in the States, bro. Uh, how, how did, like, what made you, like, want to go in, I mean, uh, to go start training this crazy sport, man? Well, I was actually just looking for something else to do besides powerlifting. And uh, I started with the kickboxing, and then there was a guy there named Mark Strasser who was uh, teaching combat sambo. He's a sambo rep of uh, Ontario up here in Canada. So we went with him, and uh, he taught, got me into the sambo stuff. And then from sambo, it kind of slowly 
etched into the catch wrestling and shooto. And he was certified to belt me in that. So after about six years with him, I, I reached a brown belt. And then uh, just fighting in between that, the guy was uh, had a lot of Muay Thai fights too. So he was really well knowledgeable. Nice, nice. So <laughs> Nice. You guys are on the couch now. You're not on the floor. Bro, man, I <laughs> just got a transition. You guys are, you, you guys are moving up. <laughs> Started from the bottom, now we're here, bro. <laughs> um, so you kind of got into that. When did the when did the MMA though come into play, man? Because it's a it's a big step, dude. Going from like, uh, hang on, let me move this. It's a big step going going from like, um, you know, wrestling submissions to like striking, man, and then going to that into like MMA, like. What was the the switch? Did you did you watch, like always watch like UFC and MMA back in the day, or is just like you saw some friends uh, doing it? And yeah, I watched a lot of UFC when I was a little bit younger. And uh, at the time, though, I was like, "Ryan, you got to be a sadistic fuck to want to go and do that kind of stuff, right?" <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it just kind of fell in that way. As soon as you get married, you want to punch someone in the face, right? So. <laughs> I have a girlfriend of three so, years. I, I always want to punch everybody in the face, man. I got you, dude. I know. I understand what, you, what you're saying. Yeah, like um, I, I was training the sambo and the shooto for literally three months, and then uh, I got into the ring and did an amateur fight against a teammate, <laughs> a guy that I power lifted with and wrestled with in high school. We went in there. Uh, I guess just we we both knew it wasn't gonna be a little yeah let's do a little amateur fight. <laughs> we went in there to fuck each other up. Cause we knew each other for like a decade. <laughs> so I went in there with the sole purpose of getting him down and submitting him. And the guy came up and smoked me like four times in the face. And all of a sudden I was like, "Fuck that submission shit! I want to punch this guy in the nose." So I just came home, try to slug this guy out, and then after like two rounds, uh. The first round was probably mine. Second round was his. So, like, we were going kind of tied into the third. And then I just was like, well, what the fuck am I doing? I'm supposed to be taking this guy down. <laughs> <laughs> just, I threw so many leg kicks in that fight. Those were the only thing that was going for me. And then I landed this really good spinning back fist. And then I, I stuffed his takedown, got him, got his back and submitted him, choked him out. And that was it. And then my wife ran up to the stage. And she's, <laughs> during the fight, my wife's screaming, fuck you, flanked my opponent. <laughs> <laughs> She was vocal. It was awesome. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. In my second amateur fight she was at, she was screaming to the ref, the guy's not defending himself. My husband's killing him. <laughs> and it, it, he did stop it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the guy showed up to the fight with braces still in his mouth. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious, so, dude. I hit him so hard, broke his nose. Uh, his, his his braces were getting stuck in his mouthpiece. Oh so my god! So he had to like angle that shit out of there. They, they had to get the jaws of life to get those fucking mouthpiece off. Right there. Yeah, I did. yeah. I, I wish I could send you pictures, but I don't know technology that well. But there was a picture of me and him after the fight. He looked like Freddy Krueger. Oh my god! <laughs> Well, that's, like that. that's to fuck with my boy Mike, man. You don't fuck with him like that. He was ugly to be, he was ugly to begin with to be fair, but it didn't help him. <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. Hey Mike, real quick, man. I'm running low on my battery life. We're gonna do a segment we usually do at the end of the podcast. We're gonna do it now. It's called Random Ass Questions. We do uh, 15 random ass questions. Could be anything in the fucking world. You sound like you're pretty much game for anything, though. I'm gonna knock it out and then. Uh, go find a charger for my phone somewhere. I'm on like 7% life. Only reason really why we're doing it first. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, put the timer on. And uh, first question, man. Favorite rapper? Uh, Tupac. That's not a bad oh, answer. Yeah. That's a good answer. Favorite sport? Well, I could give you the usual MMA answer, but I'll say uh, hockey or wrestling. Uh, that's a good answer. Uh, you gotta give us a typical answer, right? No, right. We need different <laughs> answers. We need some different shit over here. Uh, dream job. Dream job. Ah oh, man, what's the game? Oh man, I'm gonna say uh, being a stay-at-home husband that gets to fight on the weekends. <laughs> if only it was that easy, huh? Uh, favorite cartoon growing up. Oh shit, there's so many of them. There was Ninja Turtles. There was He-Man. 
There was even that really horrible cartoon, Conan the Barbarian, which was A terrible. <laughs> Don't rewatch it. Um, the Tick, if you even remember yes, the Tick. Yes, the fucking Tick Hell was yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Holy hilarious. Shit. Tick was the shit, man. It's a good show. My, my kids love that. Dude, you should show them the, the live animation one. I think it's just as funny. The live animation or the live one? You, you, you're the live one? Yeah, live the live action, action one? one. Yeah, yeah, that one's, that one's hilarious too. Um, if you were a ring announcer, what would your tagline be? Huh. <laughs> Why aren't I in here? <laughs> uh, who's the most famous person you've ever met, man? Uh, I guess Anthony Pettis, maybe? Yeah. That's a good answer. Yeah, I trained with him a little. Well, we were in the weight room training. I was covering a friend of mine that was uh, fighting on the same card as his brother Sergio. Mm -hmm. So got to meet him, and we worked out for a bit in the, in the hotel gym. Nice guy. He's a nice cool. guy? Yeah, he was good stuff. Good, man. That's fucking awesome, man. I like, I like Anthony Pettit. He's always on my fantasy MMA team. I love he him. must cut his hair way too much, though, man. That guy never seems to have his hair out of line. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he keeps... He keeps he, even on the event, he was point. at the barbershop. Yeah, he was on the barbershop like eight <laughs> times at one embedded show. <laughs> I'm poor. My barbershop was in my, ba in my bathroom earlier before this podcast. I shaved my head just so I look fresh. <laughs> nice to you guys drinking beers and looking like college frat kids. Well, we appreciate it. Uh, and might I say, I love that haircut. Uh, <laughs> um... What's your, uh, oh, man, you don't drink anymore. What's your, what was your favorite beer when you were drinking? It, it was Moosehead. Moosehead? Moosehead Lager. I like Moosehead Lager, dude. I like Lager. I'm a Lager Pilsner fan, man, to be honest. Uh, what kind of animal you is go. your warrior spirit? Jesus. Animal's my warrior spirit. <laughs> what kind of fucking question is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say a mongoose. A mongoose. A mongoose. He's kind of sneaky they like a mongoose. They fucking kill cobras. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They fuck cobras up, dude. Yeah, they really do. They really do. Uh, if your life's turned into a movie, who's going to play you? Uh, the guy who plays Ragnar from Vikings. Hey, fuck. Dude. That's my show. Dude, it's vicious. Did you watch it yesterday? I sure did. Uh, my wife hates the show. John, don't She hates this. the show because you're going to love this. She hates the show because... Ragnar cheated on his first wife and left, and she thinks I look like Ragnar. So it just totally like pissed her <laughs> off for the rest of the series. So you have, <laughs> to, get, you have to apologize every time you see him on TV. You're like, no, he's not me. He's not me. <laughs> uh, okay, so next next thing. Uh, what is the movie rated? What's your movie life for your movie rated? Uh, it'd be definitely rated R. There's no fun in PG. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Um, okay, next question. Uh, what season in the year is the best season for some whoopee? For some whoopee? For some whoopee. Is that some, like, American slang for sex? <laughs> oh, he got it. Yeah, he knows, dude. It's American slang for fucking from the 70s, though. <laughs> you know what? It, it's, it's whenever you can get it. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Fuck That's like yeah, you dude. Pick, you know. Uh, <laughs> Bob Sapp or James Thompson, who could you fight off in a rape situation? Who could I fight off in a rape situation? Yeah, Bob Sapp or, or James Thompson. <laughs> who would be easier? <laughs> <laughs> who's easier in bed or who's easier to fight off? Who's you easier to buddies? fight off? <laughs> I mean, if you want to bet. Well, well uh, seems my spirit is the, is the mongoose. I'm going to say I'll kill them both if they're trying to rape me. <laughs> Go out their eyes. I don't care what I got to do. <laughs> if you ever watch Bob Sapp's fights, though, he'll be exhausted after three minutes of trying to scramble with me. <laughs> would, would that be your answer, ideally, Bob Sapp? Yeah, probably Bob Sapp. <laughs> uh, yeah, he just hit him one time, and he was like, no. Uh, hottest MMA fighter. Hottest MMA fighter. Well, besides myself. Um, exactly. <laughs> What's that, that Paige Vant girl? Paige Van Zandt? Paige? Yeah, sure. What about her? Yeah, she's a little I'm not going to say Ronda Rousey. Everyone says Ron Rousey. <laughs> yeah, even even my mom says Ronda Rousey. Let's get some different answers. Yeah, screw in. Ronda Rousey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ugliest MMA fighter? Oh, it's got to be us. If it's not Cyborg... <laughs> If it isn't her, it's got to be that uh, 
that man. What, what's her name? Fallon uh, Fox. No, that the one who had the sex change. Fallon Fox. Fallon. Yeah, that's her. Yeah. Or him, yeah. or whatever he did. <laughs> I don't know the political terms for this shit. On that note, <laughs> Fallon Fox or Cyborg Santos? Who has a bigger dick? Between who? <laughs> Between Fallon Fox and Cyborg Santos, who has a bigger dick? You did them both, so you tell me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. They're, they're, they're both the same size. <laughs> Which one hurt you more? <laughs> um, and then last one would be MMA fighter you could for sure take in a fight. Uh, Aaron Gallant. Ooh, I don't know who that is, but fuck That's yeah. my opponent. <laughs> <laughs> well, then what a good answer then. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's random ass questions. Uh, fucking, that was nice, man. I like that. I like that. My phone's probably about to die right now. John, you got any questions from 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 Mr. O'Neill over here, man? Fucking, I feel like I'm the one only talking over here, man. I need uh, a co. Yeah, Where's my well, co-host at? Well, one of the things is uh, we talked to Emmanuel Newton is that uh, how you said he only trained for like a week and a half. Like, well, what's your training like before uh, your actual big fight? Uh. What's my training like before the fight camp? Or, I mean, in, in the fight, fight, camp. fight camp. Yeah, your fight camp like, um, uh, like Fight camp know. life is uh, it varies, but uh, for the most part, it's I get up, I try to eat something healthy. Sometimes I miss breakfast because I got to get the kids ready for school. I get home, I I usually do my weight workout and get my the weights done, and then after that I'll go do pad work or whatever I got to do. And then you got to have work and you got to balance wifey time. And uh, kid time when you pick them up from school and that kind of good stuff. So I don't make enough money to to, to quit my job yet. So I got to fit that in there still. Yeah, no, that, that that definitely seems like a lot to juggle, especially right before a fight. Um, I did, like you know how some fighters actually try they try to leave to like another city or whatever to get rid of the distractions. Do you, do you think any of that like affects you at all? Uh. No, it doesn't affect me. Like, I, I, I don't know if I could really deal with being away from my kids that long. But uh, some of those guys, they probably just want to get away. <laughs> they want to go, go camp out and avoid that shit. <laughs> it can't, it avoid can't, the drama. It can be so stressful, dude, at, at times, man. Like, my girlfriend has yeah. a five-year-old now, and I've been with her for three years. Um, and, and, I mean, yeah, I, I don't train, you know, for fights or anything, but just trying to get a good – MMA workout in like you got to fit it in where it gets in I got to fit my podcast yeah, like, in where it gets in you know what I'm saying it, it's I, I bring my kids to a lot of my training with me like sometimes they'll sit back and watch my middle daughter Farah just loves training like she's right into the, the MMA she's right into the I'm taking her to a wrestling camp tomorrow damn that's <laughs> awesome she's only four years old she weighs 40 pounds of muscle and she can squat 40 pounds what the fuck <laughs> Four-year-old squatting her body weight. How <laughs> do I feel about that? I mean, that's really quick. Like, four years old, like... That, huh. yeah. What's my wife like? I'm not, I mean, like, how, how does your, your wife... How does she take like, that? How does she take that? I mean... Oh, <laughs> my wife hates MMA. She hates <laughs> that I do it. She hates everything about it, man. <laughs> Nobody uh, rides me harder than her on that one. But, uh... She's proud that Farrah's happy. Our, our oldest daughter is really intellectually just a little genius. Just is, is putting, a little savant, pretty much. She just puts the Legos together like crazy when she was like four. Uh, she's very, very intelligent. And then our youngest daughter, uh, Cameron, she's just such a little bundle of joy. She's just always smiling and laughing. So She's only a year old, so she doesn't really uh, do anything impressive except for make me smile yet, I guess. <laughs> That's hard to do. So. What's that? Is it, 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 are you an emotional person? Like, are you easy to make, you know, smile? Like, are, do people, like, you have to know them and shit like that. You gotta be bros and shit. No, I'm pretty cool with anybody. And it's not hard to make me laugh or smile or to even get to know me. It's just if I, if I sign a contract to beat you up, I'm probably not going to. Actually, that's a lie because I even kid with my opponents before the fight. I'll fuck with them if I can. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll troll their Facebook <laughs> profiles and, like, leave stupid comments and shit. Like, I've asked my one opponent that, that pulled out before. I was like, hey, man, can you tell me what your strong points and weak points are? Because I don't want to train more than I have to. <laughs> hey, well, well, that's a good way to go at it. Like, did he respond back? He never answered. He was being a pussy about it. <laughs> and then he got out of the fight. 
That's fucking hilarious, dude. Um, I don't know anyone that's ever done that. I mean, that's that's pretty fucking. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty fucking good, man. Mike, you're a pretty fucking funny guy, man. If the MMA thing doesn't work, you can always be a comedian. I want to put that out there. Maybe after your MMA career, you look into comedy, man. You're hilarious, bro. I love. I'm not trying to sound like a smartass either, dude. Like you literally are fucking funny, dude. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't want it to come out wrong, man. I don't want you hunting me down and shit. I don't need that drama in my life. Get he's gonna find. He's gonna <laughs> fucking find me, dude. Take me down. I saw a video. He judo slammed a guy on his head. The dude was all discombobulated. <laughs> Didn't know where the fuck he was. I gotta show you the video. Did after you hear my? Did you hear my daughter Audie in the background during that video? I didn't. I didn't listen to it with sound because I was watching it at work. Uh, but okay. I, I, I for sure. Well, I'm gonna, I'll watch it with sound. <laughs> I'll watch it with sound later on. Later on today. Um, yeah, you'll hear my daughter Audie when she was like a year, just gooing and cawing, like she was just happy to see some guy get fucked up or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was like baby language. Drop him out of his head. Yeah, daddy. <laughs> Drop it like it's hot. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's fucking hilarious, man. So, you, how long have you been doing MMA? Like actual, like, did you do any Ammies before your pro debut? Did did you? Do anything like that, yeah. or did you compete like in submission? I mean, it looked like you competed submission. Was that between the MMA fights? Was that before you fought in MMA? I've never done any submission grappling tournaments yet. I've done judo tournaments, wrestling tournaments. I did two amateur fights. I was uh, two and zero as an amateur, and then I went pro. My first pro fight was a little bit of a of a stupid decision on my end. Uh, my original opponent, um, I guess, never showed up kind of just stopped contacting the promoter. So they offered me another fight against a guy who's a fair bit bigger than me and uh, had a little more uh, experience than me at the time. So I ended up fighting a guy that was about 15, 20 pounds heavier than me in my first pro fight. And uh, I did all right considering he, he sucker punched me right off of the glove touch. And oh, then, uh, fuck. And there, <laughs> yeah. It was my first taste of pro MMA that they don't glove touch, I guess. <laughs> and then, what the fuck is that shit? Then, fuck uh, a glove touch. Yeah, up with fuck e, him up. I couldn't get him off me. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, I fought a judo uh, national champ guy and submitted him in 40 seconds. Fought UFC uh, tough vet uh, Louis Fassette. I remember him. And that was my first fight at 135. And um, I didn't really know how to cut weight properly back then. And I had cut like 17 or 18 pounds that day. And then I had to spend uh, the night in uh, Winnipeg Emerge because uh, I was still trying to do interviews when I was supposed to be trying to rehydrate myself, and it just turned out really bad. So I spent the night getting IV, and then I uh, got yeah. up. I didn't have my buddy's phone number or the hotel's phone number, so I had to walk back from the, ho from, uh, the hospital to the hotel. And I had to just keep asking people as I was walking by, is this where this street is and stuff like that. So it took, by the time I got back to the hotel, it was like 7 a.m. I slept till about 5 p.m. And then I never even had a chance to rehydrate, like, past the IV. And then before I know it, I'm being woken up to take to the arena to go fight. Oh, my <laughs> God. Look. No so, yeah, so I went in there way, and I, I got a big Rampage Jackson Light Slam on Louie. Got on top of him, pounded on him for a bit, and then he reversed it. I went for an arm bar, went for a triangle. That's pretty much how the first round ended. Second round came out. I literally realized that I couldn't even risk, raise my hands to, like, you know, protect my head. I was just like, oh, oh, like walking dead. And then <laughs> there was a point where he shot at me, and I was like, sprawl, Mike, he's shooting. What are you doing? Oh, fuck. He just got that. <laughs> oh, my God, okay, dude. Let's pull guard. Is nope, that... he's got your neck. <laughs> so your body, like, literally was, like, in shutdown mode. Yeah, it much, shut dude. right down, man. It was awful. Oh. I weighed myself after the fight, and uh, I was weighing about 142, and I was about 152 when I started the weight cut. So I was, like, 10 pounds away from being fully rehydrated. So it was... Uh, not a good night for me. <laughs> Damn, dude. So, that is crazy. So you're not going back to 135 anytime soon, man. Right? No, I ended up fighting at 145 after that against uh, that Olympic trial wrestler guy I was telling you about. Oh, yeah. Arnett. And then uh, that was a 22-second fight. I inside leg kicked him. He fell. He got up. I kicked him in the head and broke a whole <laughs> bunch of bones in his face. <laughs> fell down. And I grabbed him and lifted his lifeless body up to strangle him. And then the ref med told me to put him down. And then they called it a submission. <laughs> So technically, I was like, fucker took, 
motherfucker took away my only KO win as a pro, I guess. <laughs> I was just about to say that. You could have had a fucking knockout on your record. Fucking ref. I could have, but he, the, the ref kind of ruined that for me. <laughs> but, uh, oh, well. After that, I fought uh, uh, Augustino Denitali, which was like a... He was 3-1 and one as a pro, and we fought at a catchweight at 140, and he was a really highly recognized killer kickboxer on his feet. His brother was a big K-1 kickboxer, and so was he. So uh, everyone thought he was going to just smash me, and at, at King of the Cage, I was able to just neutralize him, kept slamming him, kept getting him down, and eventually I neck cranked him so hard that I, I was like a chiropractic adjustment. Like, the cracking didn't stop, even when oh. he was tapping. Oh, my God, <laughs> just, dude. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> Uh, it's great. After the fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fucking And then that's crazy. when I uh, fought Owen Fuckface Carr. <laughs> well, talk to us about uh, this guy, said, Owen Carr, man. So I'm talking to Mike the other day, and he's like, this fucking guy, Owen Carr, fucking dirty fighter. Walk. I told him not to tell me the story because I wanted him to tell it on the podcast. Okay. Walk us through this story, this some bitch story. Okay. So I have UFC vet Jesse Bonfield in my corner because I've trained with him a lot, uh-huh. and he lives like six hours from the house. So we're at the the show. We're getting ready to do the fight thing. Um, we get in the ring. I come out, and I do right off the get-go a switch leg kick, and I smoke him in the face. I kick him into the cage, and then I kick him again. And then he comes at me, and he knees me in the balls. I go, like, lunged over because obviously I just got nutshotted. And then he kneed me again right in the sternum, which put me down. And then I'm sitting there, like, trying to catch my breath, like, literally, like, uh, 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 uh. so I'm, like, I'm thinking, I, I just got to hold on to him and wait this shit out. So after about three minutes, I figure it took for me to wait that out. During that three minutes, he was headbutting me. He tried fish hooking me. What? And then he did, yeah, fish hooking, you know, when they yeah, put yeah, the finger yeah. in the mouth? Yeah. But he was using his thumb, and he was just, like, pulling on it. I think he was using it to try to control my head so I couldn't move to try to pivot out of the way of shit, because mm-hmm. he'd fish hook and then come over with an elbow. And, um, That's dirty, so dude. he split, yeah, he split my lip, and then, uh, after the, the first round was done, the fucker spit on me, or oh, blew his nose on me or something, and I was looking at the ref, like, what the fuck was that about? Like, <laughs> like, you don't catch the, the, the lip, or the, the fish hooking, you didn't catch the, the head butts, and then you let him friggin' blow his nose on me, or... And then as I'm walking away, he wipes his blood on my back. He, he wiped his eye and put his blood on me. And I was like, fuck? who the fuck is this guy? I'm like, I've never been a one to back down from confrontation, but I was literally like a deer in the headlights. I was like, did that just happen? No, <laughs> does, does people do that kind of shit? <laughs> so I go back to the corner and I'm telling Bonville, I'm like, this fucker just did it. And Jesse's like, did that guy just spit on you? I'm like, I have no freaking clue. I think he did. <laughs> You know, you're all razzled when you're in the fight, and you're just like, what the hell? So then after that, the second round comes out, and it was a little more even, kind of back and forth. He uh, he got me down eventually, if I remember correctly, and uh, he punched me in the back of the head a couple times, and then the ref is just like, hey, watch the back of the head shots. And then he would do it again. So I got him off me, and uh, I eventually, he tried to stomp me at one point, and then I got him in a heel hook, and I heard his leg like just shift, with just a little pop, and I was like, oh, I got him. And I let go of the submission. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was like, fuck me. Why do I have to be a sportsman to this dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> so he got out, and I was like, man. I'm like, if I get that leg again, I am breaking it completely. I'm not letting go because I hear popping. So I never got another leg hook on him. <laughs> so then the third round starts, and um, I get him down. I get him on the ground, and I'm working my ground and pound. And then he... Uh, Gets back to his guard, pushes me back a little bit, and he illegally up kicks me in the face when we're both on the ground. And then I look at the ref like, my stupidity. I'm like, what did you do that for? Then all of a sudden, kicks me again. Oh, <laughs> and then the ref finally stands him up. And guess what the ref is? What would you think the ref should do? That's a. That's a no, take away a point. You take away a point at that point. We're running or take away a point and then have a start back on the ground, right? Right, exactly. You start back from the same yeah. position. He stood us up. And no warning, no point deductions. <laughs> what the fuck kind of refs do you have in Canada, bro? <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't ref anymore in MMA. If that makes if that was his last fight he ever did. Oh, wh- so, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lucky me. <laughs> I got the worst ref ever for a little bit. So then, that's pretty much how the third round ended. And I'm sitting there like, 
fuck my life. Like, this guy just robbed me of my entire fight. Like, his dirty tactics completely took me off my game. Uh, no excuse really for it, I guess, to just be better prepared for everything. So then eventually, uh, it, they ruled it a no contest because they reviewed it and saw all the dirty shit he was doing. And so they, they called it a no contest, and that was it. And then Owen refused any uh, rematches at 145 or 155 or anything like that. Like, I can't make 135 again. Like, that's, that, that weight cut is way too difficult for me, and it, you know, it's too much. What do you walk around so, at normally, man? I can get up as high as 185. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 are, you, what are you right now? Like what are you? I don't want. Well, you don't have to tell us right now. But what around? What are, I don't want. I don't want your opponent to listen to podcasts and him know what you walk. Around. But what do you usually walk around at, man? Like what's a normal weight for for Mike O'Neill? I get up to about one eighty. Okay, nice yeah. man. And then you so just like cut. One eighty is where I'm comfortable. One seventy, I'm I'm in pretty good shape. Like like I can see, I can still see my abs at one eighty, but at one seventy, I can see them better. At one sixty <laughs> or one sixty five, they're pretty shredded. That's the way. That's the way <laughs> I feel too, man. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so one thirty five was too hard. Like I was doing like twenty pound water cuts for one thirty five. It was just too much. Fuck out of here with that bullshit. When was the last time you weighed 135 naturally? Was it like sixth grade? When he, <laughs> when he was born? <laughs> <laughs> it was probably uh, maybe grade eight or nine. <laughs> and even then, I think I was probably what 140, 145. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. I was in seventh grade last time I weighed 135. <laughs> <laughs> Man, don't ask me the last time I weighed 135. I couldn't fucking tell you. Uh, but, <laughs> but uh, all right, so you fight at, you said you're fighting at lightweight now from now on, right? Is that what I... Yeah, uh, I'll fight at 155 or 145 if I'm feeling up to it. Like, I, to be honest, I just hate the dieting part, but, like, right at 155, it's the perfect family weight for me. Like, I can still have, like, a sneak meal, like, once in a while. Like, I don't have to be, like... No chocolate milk at all. Like, here I can have a chocolate milk every two days or something like that and not really worry about it. It's not a big deal. Like, right now I'm only five pounds out from where I want to be before I start a water cut. Okay. So it's all good. I, and I feel like I have more energy at this weight, too. I can hit harder. I can move more weight. <laughs> so do you, it's, it's do all you good. feel, like, equal in the cage when you're fighting somebody who's lightweight? Like, do you feel equal size match? Or do you feel like, you know, you're smaller or bigger? Like, what's, what's that like? I'm probably I'm probably the size of an average maybe lightweight at my level. Like I, if I were to ever go to the U, if I ever got to the UFC, I'd definitely be going fighting at 145. 145. Yeah, like um, I would have to just cut that cut back the weightlifting. Like I love weightlifting, and that's why. And I've always put on side like muscle mass pretty easily. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's at. My last fight was at lightweight, and um. That fight, I got one of the best slams in hard, in probably in Canadian history. I'm, I'm not even gonna underscore it. It was a fucking beautiful slam. It was that hip toss into a into a full fledged suplex slam. <laughs> it was like Kevin Kevin Randleman and Fedor Emelianenko slam. Oh my <laughs> and, uh, god! <laughs> so I got on top of him and I was pounding on him and he got up and that was the fight where uh, I accidentally low blowed him. And, again, I'm a pretty sportsman-like guy. I raised my hands and admitted that I got him, or the ref wouldn't have even known any different. Separated us. And then uh, we go back at it, and then he knees me in the nuts, and I drop, and he just fucking unloads. Like, he's like, oh, my opportunity, and just goes <laughs> for it. And so the ref thought he le he kneed me in the stomach and then waved at a TKO. <laughs> so... The ref, like, apologized to me later and said, hey, I saw the replay. It looked like it slid up and got you in the groin. I'm sorry. But I'm like, well, I appreciate the apology, off. but they're, they're a little late now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what can you do uh, until they have an instant replay rule in MMA, right? Right, yeah. Good luck with that. Good I mean, luck with bro. that, homie. Yeah, dude, that's fucked off. Now, was this... I would have lost. No, <laughs> was, this, was this because you fought somebody from America again? Are you saying these American fighters, man... <laughs> They just fucking up shit uh, when they go Canada. He, he was a he was a Canadian. Oh, I've only fought uh, Canadians. I've never had a, a a fight against an American yet. So, damn. Oh, that's well. You know, that's whatever. That's whatever. There's a lot of fucking good Canadians. Like I feel like there's a better, like there's some better. Like better. It depends on what the weight class is, but I've seen some better talent come out of Canada than I have uh, America as of late, man. Uh, just especially yeah, we got, the, the lower weight classes. There's a, mm -hmm. We got a lot of talent coming out of Canada. It's it's really incredible, actually. 
Like, Ontario just has so many uh, top-notch fighters. Quebec obviously has so many good French-Canadian fighters. Alberta's got an, an endless supply of fighters out there. Yeah, so. my favorite fighter, well, he's not in fight anymore, was GSP, man. Love GSP. Yeah. I mean, I know that has nothing to do probably with maybe where you stay because uh, Quebec yeah. somewhere else. Like, where, where are you at, man? Where are you, where are you out of right now? <laughs> I'm... I'm the province next to Quebec. <laughs> oh, okay. So he's your neighbor. So GSP yeah, could he's call you on 20 the phone. Hour, uh, he's probably a 25-hour bus drive or uh, or maybe a, an hour and a half plane ride. Oh, just, away. just 20 hours. <laughs> just 20 hours. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. The Great crazy, Lakes dude. get in the way of everything, you know? <laughs> you got to drive around them. That's, okay. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. But yeah, we live in Texas, man. It takes like 20 hours if you want to drive yeah, no, great, anywhere, actually. Yeah, it right kind of takes 20 hours if you want to go anywhere here anyways. Uh, but yeah, I love George St. Pierre, man. Uh, I like to make pretend I can do a pretty good George St. Pierre uh, impression. Um, eh, hello, hey, Mike O'Neill. How's it going over there, man? Eh, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually kind of impressed. That's pretty creepy good. <laughs> Are you working on your French-Canadian pickup lines? Uh, I kind of am, man. I say to a girl, hey, hello, hey, baby. Uh, uh, you like a guy who uh, was a champion in the UFC? And she say, maybe. And I say, I can uh, throw a pretty good uh, Superman a jab. And she's like, hey, baby, that turned me on, man. So, yeah, <laughs> that's my pickup line, man. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I would believe I was talking to GSP, man. <laughs> you, need to get your own, you need to get your own ventriloquist dummies to sit here and play with. <laughs> and the you could have your own, your own little dummy right here, and you could have your hand up, George, and play with them and all that kind of stuff. You'd do great at it. <laughs> One day I'll be there. Maybe if this podcast yeah. thing doesn't work out, I'll go do that. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta meet George St. Pierre and say, I, w I want you to be my ventriloquist dummy. Let me play you like a dummy. Let I want to get my hand right in there and just wear you like a glove. Let me show you where I'm gonna put my hand at, George. It, it's gonna be okay. I've done this before. Uh <laughs> it gives you the true, authentic feeling for it. <laughs> so it is the way to do it. <laughs> It's uh, got to be done this way. It's the way. It's, it's part of the act. I can't help it. This is just the way it's been done hundreds of years. Exactly. <laughs> Jeff Foxworthy would not approve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's, like I said, I'd like to make pretend I can I could do some pretty good impressions. But, yeah, George St. Pierre, one of my favorite fighters. I'm glad to hear the, the scene in uh, Canada uh, kind of has gone up from there. I saw there was a really good fight card, actually, you were on, and you were like the third kind of co-main event on it, and it had uh, Lee Mean who's Jordan Means' father, and uh, Jeff Munson fought on the on that. Yeah, card. that was my first. That was my first pro fight. That was the fight where I where I went to touch gloves and I got sucker punched. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I brought back memories. <laughs> yeah, I've never been hit that hard since. <laughs> Damn, man, that's crazy. Uh, but yeah, there's some good fights that that happen like out of there, dude. Some legit. Legit fucking shit that happens. Did you watch that tough season with Canada? Who who were they fighting? It was anyway, Canada versus Australia. They got they smashed Australia. Like it wasn't even a competition. Like that. Yeah. Was in, like, yeah, dude. That's yeah. what I'm telling you. That the talent out of there, bro, is like every season of Ultimate Fighter. There's always a Canadian. Like there's always a Canadian. Like of course it's gonna be fucking people from the US, uh, USA, but I mean there's always somebody from Britain and there's always somebody from Canada, dude. Like they got like top. You don't see anybody from Brazil. You don't see anybody from. Even before then, you didn't see anybody from Brazil or Mexico or Australia. You didn't see anybody anywhere else. It was like Canada and like England. They got some fucking bangers over there, bro. Russia's coming up. That's, be that's because Canada and England speak English. They're not going to bring a guy who speaks Portuguese onto their show and be like, hey, this is the guy that nobody understands. <laughs> <laughs> People who watch Ultimate Fighter don't want to read subtitles. What? That, you had to read. I mean, they brought Matt Hamill on and he couldn't speak English. Uh, I mean, sign language. I mean, he was sign. <laughs> I mean, it was sign language, but fuck it, you know. Like he, he was. Hey, everybody, how's it going? I love the U.S. They had to get a translator for his ass. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like yeah. they could do yeah, the same fucking shit with somebody sandwich. from from uh, Brazil or Mexico. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But Hamill, Hamill was a feel good story. They were selling a feel good story there. Like there's this deaf wrestler that's overcoming everything, and he was a badass too. He, like, was, I, he was one of my. Even with one of my he favorite kicked fighters. ass back then. 
Yeah. When he fought Bisbing in that first fight, I swear to God they robbed him. I thought he beat Bisbing. It was that close. Fight. That was a really close fight, man. I I really liked Matt Hamill when he was, you know, doing big shit, and I was sad to see him get beat up by, by John Jones when he did, man. But yeah, it was bad. But uh, I'm just saying they could have a feel good story from somebody from uh, Brazil. Poor guy can't speak English. Yes, that's true. You know, uh, bring him on the show. It, but now they got the ultimate part of Brazil the, now, the, so it doesn't fucking touch matter. Back on um, Matt Hamill, though, he's the only guy to beat Jones. Well, yeah. <laughs> Touche, good man. Touche. Uh, that was some bullshit. Yeah, that was some bullshit, though, man. They should have I mean, called honestly, him. Do you think he takes that credit? Like, honestly. Uh, he doesn't walk into a club and be like, hey, girl, I took out man, uh, John Jones. Let's go have a drink. You know, he doesn't do that shit, man. Like he, I'm sure he did. That's the last thing on his fucking mind, you know. I don't, I'm just saying, man. It, it, hey, if I beat Jones anyway, possible, <laughs> I would be <laughs> I think it's kind of like when you, if you were to beat Nick Newell, man. Like, you, there's no credit in beating a, a one-armed guy because, like, it's a lose-lose situation. We talk about this, man. Like, you lose, you you win. And you're like, yeah, the other guy was super tough. And, you know, girl's like, oh, yeah, how tough was he? Man, he had, like, one arm and everything, man. Like, he was good. Yeah, but he, but he swung it like no one else could. <laughs> that was his jack-off arm. It, it was, he was fucking tough, dude. <laughs> or, I mean, you, you know, and you don't take any credit if you lose because, like, you're like, damn it. You know, you take the loss hard. You're like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, you just lost no. And it, uh, who'd you lose to? Uh, one armed guy. A one armed uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, I think it's yeah, one of those situations, man. It's, it's a tricky situation, win or lose. Uh, man, I'm yeah, sorry. I, I'd like, Matt, okay, so he had you in a, a, a rear naked choke. Like, would you would you grab a strong arm? Like, would you hesitate to, you know, grab, uh, you know, uh, grab, grab his uh, No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, depending if he's using the part of my uh, my uh, political incorrectness, but if he's using the nub as the the hand up here, <laughs> I'm gonna go for that one. If he's using the one with the hand up there, then yeah. But you know, either way, it's I'm gonna go after whatever arm I need to go after. I'm not gonna let him choke me out with his nub or the other hand. So. <laughs> so uh, and, and honestly. Um, Are you about I, about the is he actually, like, using the, the the missing hand to punch people? Yeah. Like, I haven't watched any of his fights. No, he, he doesn't. I mean, he kind of does. He kind of, like, tweaks it out there. Like, it's like this, you know. He kind of, like, tweaks it out there like that. But he, I mean, he doesn't really, like. God, look at it. He doesn't, look at it. <laughs> he doesn't end fights. You're freaking out. Yeah. He, he yeah. doesn't end fights with it, dude. It's not, it's not. He's just something he uses yeah. to set up or uses to pivot when he's on top. He uses... I mean, for a handicapped guy, he's damn good. I mean, yeah, there's no fucking man. doubt about the guy. The man is talented. He's got a hit a belt, man. The man is talented. Yeah. He had a belt in like RFA or something like that. The man's talented. I'm just saying. I mean, it's it's one of those things. It's a win or lose. It's a lose lose situation for having a, a loss like that. Just like it is with Matt Hamill having that win on his record. I mean, it's kind of like, oh, oh, I won, but now it's getting beat up. You know, like it's it, you I know. I still won. I still won. You know, I guess whatever the fuck. Plus. But, on the plus side to the guy with no hand, though, um, like I've seen a couple of his fights. I think he did he fight in Strike Force once or twice. Nah, nah. Nick Newell has only fought in World Series. That's been like his kind of the biggest. Oh, thing. Okay, sorry. Yeah, World Series of fighting. Yeah, but he's definitely a really good fighter. Like, um, he, you don't see guys it. like that. Like, obviously, can you imagine how good he'd be with both hands. Like, crap. The dude's amazing. So, he's only lost to Justin Gaethje. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that at all. Justin Gaethje's. No. Fucking amazing. So, like, I think a lot of people probably take the fight with him because he is a step up. Like, he's really friggin' good. Obviously, like, and you're going to have the one-arm advantage, I guess, on him. But most case scenario, like, he's a he's been a pretty good killer from what I remember about him. I don't know that much about him. I've seen him fight once. And the one fight I saw him fight, which was a World Series of Fighting card, I believe, he yeah. was doing really good. So, yeah. good on him. I've seen him fight a couple times, and the dude's amazing talent. And I saw him lost to... Justin Gaethje, and it's just, just Justin Gaethje is just an amazing, amazing athlete. And uh, kind of on that same notion, man, who are some of, like, your your fighters that really, you like, you try to, like, you really like or emulate or look at? 
Um, or is it even fighters? Is it, you know, maybe like submission guys from back in the day or currently, man? Like, wh who's really somebody, like, somebody that you really, you know, like or emulate, look up to type, type shit? Uh, well, GSP was one of them. Like, I loved how he could mix everything up. He fluid everything together really nicely. So fluid. Just, so fluid. Just, yeah, so well-rounded. It's hard not to be, uh, not to be interested or to idolize him. Um, uh, Hector Lombard's pretty cool. I liked watching him, especially when he was in Bellator. Like, he was like the Tyson. He was Mike the Tyson fucking of, man, uh, man, yeah. Just go out and he just kill people. Like, granted, most of them were nobodies, but he went out there and, and made it feel like a Tyson atmosphere. <laughs> went out and knocked people the hell out. Dude, when he, if you, if you saw <laughs> yeah. that fight where he ragdolled Jake Shields, just, just threw him around. Oh, yeah. No big deal. Yeah. No big deal. I'm Hector Lombard just throwing around one of the best shit guys ever. Just throwing him yeah. around. No big deal, guy. That shit was amazing. Yeah, Jake still wakes up with night terrors from that shit. <laughs> I, I wake up with night terrors about Hector Lombard. Every time I make fun of him, I apologize because I don't want him. I don't want him to wake up. Hey, man. Hey, man. What are you doing, man? Are you making fun of me, man? I'm going to find you, man. I don't want him to do that to me, Jake, man. I'm so scared. Jake Shields uh, had to wake up from some night terrors of being imaginary raped in that fight. Like, that fight was bad. <laughs> And then besides uh, Hector Lombard and uh, the rest of them, hmm. Like I, I, there's so many fighters that I watch and that I'm in, but I, I, I get you, really into watching. Are you really into like, uh, your boy Josh Barnett? I mean, he's a catch wrestler. You shoot. He's he he's done shoot. I mean, you look like a. I watch I watch a little highlights of this guy. The guy looks like a little Josh Barnett, dude. Like just just no big deal. Just throwing people on their heads and shit. No big deal at all. Do you like do you like Josh Barnett or is you like his techniques fucked off in the game? <laughs> no, uh, Barnett's pretty good stuff. Like uh, I, I think he could definitely use the treadmill a little more. But uh, you know, guy likes his pizza. I don't know. <laughs> and he, so, but, yeah, his style, I love it. It's uh, good stuff. He's throwing people on their heads. It's always fun, entertaining stuff. I love watching slams. So you like it's good. Khabib. Can't complain. You like Khabib? Oh, Khabib's good shit. Khabib. Uh, Khabib. Khabib. Yeah, that, Russian, that Russian's a killer. <laughs> Aren't I, all I, of hate them? That, I hate that <laughs> afro, that nice, little nice. thing he wears. But uh, other than that, like, he's put on some great fights. I was actually watching his fight before the podcast. His fight against uh, Pat Healy. Yes. Whoa. Cuts from like back in yeah. the, like they're fucking weird and shit. Like Russians fight fucking weird. They fight. They, yeah, they, they have, have weird like, shit. Like they they also like in the samba they throw like their punches with an overhand kind of hook like that. They hit with this side of the the fist a lot of times. It's it's a different type of style. Like to me, like. I just feel like there's not enough power there, but like you see some of them throw those type of punches, it's they the, they put people to sleep. It's the kettlebell techniques that they work that develop that 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 just yeah. explosiveness. I mean, that's what Fedor used to do. Even though he he never looked like he had a six pack, but the guy had yeah. mad technique, mad <laughs> power, and you're like, yeah. where the hell in your body are you putting all this power, Fedor? Because you're smaller than everyone. Like he was a pretty he's a pretty small. Uh, heavyweight, heavyweight compared yeah. to like well I mean so is Kane and Kane's explosive as fuck like yeah. I think there's a, a point of diminishing returns you know that, that where you can be like that but yeah I, I mean Fedor was known for just throwing that that overhand that overhand right and mm. clocking people till they they forgot that they why they were there They're like I'm ready for a fight they're like you're already knocked out <laughs> just want to let you know <laughs> you're already done <laughs> You remember when he knocked out Andre Arlovski in Affliction? Oh my God, dude! Andre went in. Went in for that. Went in for, that <laughs> <laughs> for the flying knee. Uh, bye, bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Uh, took him out, man. So, uh, uh, yeah, I mean that's a good point you bring up, dude. I never even, I've never really noticed that. Like, but that is that is pretty true, man. A lot of those those Russian fighters have that. Uh, they do that overhand right business. Uh, that's a good point, yeah, man. They have a very awkward technique. Awkward. Awkward um, as fuck. But, I mean, you gotta admit how beautiful the control of Khabib is. Like, once he gets on you, like, I know people, some people complain, like, uh, he wrestles, you know, that he wrestles too much and then he turns into a wrestling match. But, uh, he is fucking... People should go shoot the boxing and if they're really whining about wrestling. 
<laughs> like, the thing about boxing is when they hug too much. I hate that shit when they like fucking hug every fucking time and the ref has to break them up. Like it just kind of gets on my nerves. But uh, I don't know. Like I, I don't see why people would, like even complain about that last Henderson fight because. He used wrestling. He just took the fight where he felt it needed to go. Did you watch that one at all? That's Henderson? No, uh, Johnny, Johnny Hendricks. Oh, Johnny Hendricks. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I was thinking of Benson Henderson, and I was like, did he wrestle as much as last year? Okay, you were saying Johnny Hendricks and who? And Matt um, Brown? Yeah. Matt Brown? Yeah, I missed that fight. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, bro, like, a lot of people complained about it, but you as a wrestler, I'm pretty sure... Uh, you're gonna feel. Like You'd appreciate took, it. Yeah, you'll, you'll appreciate it, but you'll feel that he took the fight where he had a shot, like a shot opened up, and he took. Because who the fuck wants to stand with Matt Brown? Yeah. Like, I I don't want to. Like, I'm I'm scared to talk bad about Matt Brown. I mean, at, at the end of the day, the whole maybe the the whole point of the game is to fight where you're at your best and. And win. Yep. You're, you're gonna yeah and win. At the end of the day. <laughs> our bitching and moaning be like, oh, the fight wasn't entertaining enough, isn't paying his bills. Right. <laughs> they're, they're not putting his kids through college. Have you seen the size of his truck? We're not putting gas in that <laughs> thing. Who <laughs> are we to sit here and bitch and be like, fight like a boxer and hit that guy? <laughs> like, Is that one of the things guys? that really gets on your nerves? Like, you'd pet peeve for being an MMA fighter. What is it? What would it be? I mean, there's about 100,000 things you could, you know, that, you could complain about his name may fighter, but what's one of the biggest things that like fans do really pisses you off, man? I haven't had any problems with fans just because like I don't have to do too much media things. Like if I had to do as much media stuff as the UFC has to do, I'd be like Nick Diaz all over them fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Right after this podcast, dude, your world's exploding. I promise, dude. Big things after this. <laughs> Big things after this, man. I mean, this episode had Emmanuel Newton. It's going to get a lot of fucking traction going man and i'm excited about that fact man so i'm telling you dude big things after this pod don't forget about the little guys don't forget about the little guys mike <laughs> mike o'neill <laughs> couch warriors i'm not a couch warrior <laughs> yeah well that's a good thing man not to have any complaints about the fans i mean i guess hopping on the next thing though where where'd the nickname come from the caveman boy nickname caveman boy <laughs> <laughs> what are you uh, nickname? When I first started training, um, a training partner, George Carlos, uh, we used to call him Handsome George, but now he's older and he's just been turned into Presentable George. So <laughs> <laughs> he, he gave me the nickname Caveman because uh, I, I just came in and fought like a Neanderthal. I would just wrestle you to the ground and just Donkey Kong your face. <laughs> and, uh, so he started calling me a Caveman. And then uh, Iver who's, uh, I guess he's one of the few Mexicans that live in Canada, came up and <laughs> he started uh, thinking that I was a bully and that I was bullying uh, all the people I was sparring and stuff like that. So he, he added on the bully to it. So then it just, we, they merged the two and called it Caveman Bully. And then uh, after a couple of fights, it, it just really stuck. And uh, people in Winnipeg picked up on it and then people in Calgary really embraced it and the interview styles and the stuff I say can come across as pretty funny shit sometimes, I guess. So uh, it all just worked out really good. Yeah, I remember you saying that online, uh, that uh, you, you like to really talk shit or like, talk to people. Like, um, what, like, has any of it worked that you noticed, or is it just something you just, uh, really like to do without any intention of provoking the other party? Yeah, um... When I screw with them or troll with them on Facebook, it's mostly just out of humor for my own time. Like, I get bored sometimes and want to screw with people. <laughs> uh, even those, even the fight book uh, people, I'll screw with some of you guys once in a while if I see an opportunity. And uh, if it works on them, awesome. If it doesn't, I don't care. Me and Louis Facet actually had a funny uh, thing on Facebook, or, or I think it was Facebook. And I was making fun of his hipster glasses, and then uh, I said, don't bring any of that shit to the weigh-ins unless you're going to share a pair with me. <laughs> and then sure enough, he did, so. <laughs> Pretty funny stuff. First time I ever wore hipster eyeglasses. That's fucking hilarious, man. That is yeah. funny, dude. Uh, who's been, like, right now, you know, you're uh, nine fights in right now, pro? Because it's four, four, and one, I've right? Got, yeah, nine fights as a pro. Uh, which one has been your your toughest one? Was it was it? Would you say it was the Owen Carr one because he fought dirty, or was there a different one? 
uh, outside of that one that was like, yeah, it was pretty damn hard. The Owen Carr fight was a real grinder fight, and it it was more of like a psychological mindfucker because I was sitting there. I felt like I was trying to ref the fight too because I felt like the ref was incompetent or blind. <laughs> it was like Sarah Kel. It was like Sarah Keller was out there refing us, you know. <laughs> Helen Keller, Helen Keller, <laughs> Helen Keller. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sitting there like, you know. So that was a pretty screwed up uh, fight. But uh, actually, to be honest, I had this other really grueling fight, and um, it was the last fight I ever did at 135 against Chad and Halliger. Uh-huh. Uh, he fought a lot of tough guys, so his record didn't really say he was a tough guy, but he was a tough fighter. One of the hardest-hitting people I ever fought, and he was, you know, 135-er. I was uh, pretty deprived of nutrients because I had to diet myself quite a bit down to make that weight. And... Uh, it was a three-round grueling fight. Like, I went for a couple heel hooks. Like, I, I dominated him most of the fight, but it was really agonizing to do it. Like, I got a couple good slams on him, too, and I was just really happy to get the choke in the third round. So that was probably the, the most grueling fight I've had since, uh, so far. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Um, do you, right now, during, like, training and stuff and, and getting ready for a fight, do you ever have, like... You know, just just kind of like, like, I guess I guess being human, man. Be, do you ever have like that off where you're like, "Why the fuck am I doing this?" Or is it is it always like, do you always you know, have you ever have you even felt that? I mean, you know, being an MMA, I can't I can't imagine what it's like to be an MMA fighter, but I can't imagine what it's like working out and stuff. And there's some days where I'm like, "Oh fuck, am I doing this?" I want to just have a stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut or something. Like I just want to enjoy life, you know. Like, do you ever get like that? And when and when you do, oh, yeah. what really is like, you know, what helps you stay, you know, focused? You know, is it is it family? Is it you know, you have a dream, you have a vision to get somewhere else, man? Uh, what, what's let's let's dig into the psyche of Mr. O'Neill over here. <laughs> I definitely get a lot of those days where I'm like, oh God, why am I still doing this? But like, usually it's not during training camp. During training camp, I'm usually enjoying myself. I'm I'm not a person that minds and bitches. Like I want to do this, and so it's something I'm doing. But uh, fight day and, and weigh-in day are the days where I'm sitting there in the bathtub looking like a raisin, and I say to myself, fuck, what the hell am I here for? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm literally going to make maybe $1,800 if I win. I'll make 1000 if I lose. Is this worth it? <laughs> like, I'm losing all my fluids. I'm going to be, like, freaking feeling like shit the whole day. And then when fight day comes, you're sitting there, you're like, Man, I just want the fight to start. I just want the fight to start. What the hell? You're all anxious and shit. I hate that. And then when you're warming up and you're being rushed because uh, TV or they want to film you and shit, I hate that too. Um, then when you finally get, when they're finally calling you up to bat and you can finally get ready to go out there, that's when it's like finally I'm here. When the bell rings, all the nerves go, and you're just like, ah, I can do it. I've been wanting to do. <laughs> just go in there and just. <laughs> Go hog wild and try to finish the fight as quick as you can, or as as, as much fun as you want out of it. I guess too. Right. That's that's <laughs> so. fucking crazy, man. That's that's a, what a, what an experience. You know what a fucking experience as an MMA fighter, man, to to kind of go through that. Quick question, Mike. Have you ever? It might sound silly. I don't know if anybody's ever asked. You, have you ever tried out though for the tough season? Any of the tough? No, seasons? I've never tried out for it. You could, you could totally do it, man. Yeah, do it, do it do it <laughs> yeah man it'll be dope to you know because I, I know there's there's again there's always somebody out, out of canada you know coming out i didn't know if you ever tried out for it or whatnot man i don't know where that question was i've never tried out for it uh i guess you'd have to have some type of fundraiser to get down to vegas <laughs> and then uh Shit, yeah I, go fund me get a, as active as fight book let's is. get it let's get a go fund me on on okay. fight book mma dude i'm sure everybody would 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 throw a dollar in or something man that would be fucking awesome dude if you if, yeah that's if you want to do that you know it's whatever dude it's, you'll make your own way there like I, I've, I've seen this guy fight the dude's fucking amazing man man just make up some like sob story you came from the ghetto and some shit yeah, tell me yeah you'll you get that money real quick you used to you're from brazil you used to do sign language you learned you live in canada let's throw everything how does <laughs> <laughs> a brazilian get an irish last name how'd you get so white uh 
You know that thing Michael Jackson had? <laughs> I just bleached myself. I have that. I have that. Now you have a disease. We're throwing a disease in there, too. He's got that. Yeah, I lost the Brazilian in me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got, a, he got a Canadian name. I like this story, dude. We're going to pass the story along to some people. I know some people. Um, but, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's cool, though. You know. yeah, he, he, we, should, we should do that. We should start a GoFundMe. Start a GoFundMe for, for O'Neal, dude. That would be dope, man. Do you prefer me calling you O'Neal? Do you prefer me calling you Mike? What do you prefer, man? Do you want me to call you, uh, was it Caveman Bully? CMB? Uh, CMB? <laughs> Uh, well, in, in Calgary, <laughs> that's pretty much all they call me is caveman or CMB and all that. So, yeah, whatever. Like, I'm fine with either or. You know, my name is Mike or O'Neill, whatever. It's all good. It doesn't bother me none. What, what, what's the name that you get called when you're in trouble from your mom? Is it just say your whole name or, like, first name? We're Mexican. Yeah. Yeah. We're Mexican. We get all the names. Yeah. We get all the names. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blake when Joshua Stevenson. Younger, <laughs> my wife and my mom both yeah say Michael when they when it's something bad. Oh goddamn! So, <laughs> so whenever my wife says Michael, oh, that's when I was just like, <laughs> you're like yes. Yeah, what you just you grab the chocolate and you throw it at her and run in the other direction, right? <laughs> We love chocolate. <laughs> Destruction. Destruction. <laughs> it fucking works. It does work. Oh, man, that's good, man. Fucking Mike, dude, you're hilarious, man. So when is your next fight coming up, Mike? When do, uh, Let everybody know when your next fight's coming up is. Could you hear me? Oh, the next fight is May 20. It's May 25th. It'll be in Calgary, Alberta for Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks Fighting Championships. It'll be on Fight Network if you want to watch it. Man, we don't have Fight Network here in the States, bro. Oh, you guys suck. Okay, um, <laughs> we'll GFL, uh, GoFightLive.com will have it streamed. You oh, just got to okay. pay 10 bucks though, for it. Oh, okay. Well, we'll find a way to watch it uh, that night. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's whatever. It's not bad. It's not 10 bucks it's for like a pay-per-view. It's not bad, bucks. dude. You can watch my old fights on GFL too. So. Oh yeah, dope. See. So wait, is that ten bucks a month or? No, one time. It's like. No, a it's, it's, it's ten bucks a show. Yeah. And then once you buy the show, you you it stays on your account for however long you have your account for. Oh, that's okay. dope. That's pretty dope. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we'd watch that, man. We'll watch our boy Mike O'Neill, dude. You said the twenty what? Twenty ninth. Twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Twenty second. Twenty second. Twenty second. Okay. Okay. Twenty second. We could do the twenty second, dude. Get together, watch that shit. Uh, who are you fighting, and um, what, do you, what do you think about the, about the guy you're fighting, man? His name's Aaron Gallant. He's 6-6. Uh, six and six. He's got the fastest MFC uh, knockout or win or whatever you want to call it, uh, victory. So that's about the extent of what I know about him. I know he trains at uh, MMA University in Calgary. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so I know he likes to bang. He just likes to go out and swing. Mm-hmm. So, hopefully, uh, he'll break his hand on my fit on my head, and I uh, can go from there. I like that plan. <laughs> I like that. Pl- <laughs> Take Soften it out, his man. knuckles up with my face. There you go. That's what I like. That's the that's my game plan when I go into a fight. The movie where he like was headbutting his punches and broke his hand. What what movie that old guy fought? Oh, <laughs> I've seen that movie. I know which movie you're talking about. I just can't remember what it's called. It had that old fat guy in it. Uh, what movie? Like, dude would punch him and he'd like, oh, back in my day, and then he'd like fucking head. Yeah, he'd dude, duck like, and so the, the top of the head is the hardest part of the body. The old boxers used to do that when you right. about a punch, they'd duck their head. So you'd hit the forehead where you'd head by the guy, you could break the guy's hands that way. Yeah, that's a good technique. That's a good technique, but I don't know what movie you guys are talking about. Yeah, fuck, I, like, I... Yeah, I don't know. I know the tech. I know the technique. It's well, still used. Speaking of that, like, did you did you watch the Chad Mendes fight and how he knocked out Lamas? Why you always gotta bring that up, man? Yeah. With, that, with that forehead yeah. punch, man, that shit. You knocked him out on the forehead. Yeah, that was yeah, pretty like, impressive. That, like, you got some power. If you fucking... <laughs> don't just landed. Just like, like do, 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 do. You just dropped him like. That. Mendes yeah. is nuts, man. Like, uh, I I don't know how he's not a champion. It like it just goes to show you how good Aldo is, I guess, but. Mendez has been just killing people, finishing people, and, and Aldo hasn't finished anybody in a long time. So Exactly. I, I just think it's just shitty luck for Mendez, I guess. <laughs> he's always he's I mean he is the Dos Santos of the featherweight division. Not getting past not getting past the champion. 
any day soon. Uh, but speaking of the featherweight division in UFC, what do you think about my boy Connor? <laughs> <laughs> I love Connor McGregor. You gotta have love for the other Irishman, you know. The other I other Irishman. The- That's the Canada yeah. of the UK. <laughs> <laughs> With a last name like O'Neill, you know we're Irish too. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, no, I, I love the fact that he's selling the fights. He's generating interest. And uh, again, he's making money for himself to be set for life. If you come in here like all these other fighters and not sell the fight, do little to generate interest, no one remembers you. You make far less than the, the big name fighters. You go out of the sport un- like un- pretty much forgotten. And you don't really get much out of it. Like, what he's doing right now, he'll probably be set for life after this Aldo fight. I can just see the pay-per-view buy rates for that fight being huge. They're, they're going to surpass a lot of numbers, and he's yeah. going to be a rich man. <laughs> yeah, dude. I did. I love, I love Connor. Connor's my boy. I'm 10% Irish. I couldn't tell you which 10% it is, but it's, I'm 10% somewhere. Uh, but uh, I, love, I love what Connor's so, doing with the division, man. So what, 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 same here, man. How do you feel like, let's say he beats Aldo and then Chad fights and that, like, how do you feel about that? They won't match. They won't match Chad with with. Uh, they won't give him Chad, dude. Why? They're, they're gonna want to keep him champion as long as they can. They're gonna. They yeah, might. They'll, they'll, they'll probably give him the maybe the maybe Max Holloway if he beats Cub Swanson. Or I think that'd be a good fight because I mean, he's the only one that gave you know Connor a fight. Yeah, well, yeah Connor, but he didn't even really give Connor a fight. Connor got injured and Connor had to get knee surgery. ACL, yeah, that fight. during that he ACL fought, and MCL during that fight, like yeah. makes sense. Okay. He fought with a with a torn MCL or whatever it was, but he fought through with a with a you know messed up knee. So props to Connor on that one. Right. Um, I think if I think if he beats Aldo, they probably will match him up with um either um if Frankie Edgar beats Uriah Faber, I think they'll give him Edgar. And if uh, Edgar loses, they'll probably give him uh, Uriah. Chad Mendes. Oh. Like, I think Mendes. Well, I think Mendes would be the the bigger money fight. Like you have yeah. Faber, uh, you you can only give that guy so many championship title shots. Like <laughs> I don't think he's gonna beat Edgar either. <laughs> I, I I think he's probably gonna That's lose so to Edgar. Because uh, everyone's like, yeah, he wins all the fights if it doesn't have to do with the. <laughs> if it has no belt involved, he wins. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, man, it's he's uh, yeah. I I don't know. I don't know what they'll do, man. They they won't give. I don't think they'll give him that a hard of a test. Like was a wrestler. Maybe they will. Maybe I'm fucking wrong, and they will. And he fights Chad Mendez, and he can beat Chad Mendez. He doesn't get taken. I don't know. I don't know. You know, they've got they'll build up for up. it. They'll match him up with whoever will sell the most seats. And I think most interest, like Mendez after that Ramos fight, he's got a lot of a lot of heat behind him. So they match them two up. That create a lot of interest, and they gotta pretty much keep the generation or the the interest train going. And uh, he's already made fun of uh, Mendez a couple times. You know, with the whole "I could put my nuts on your forehead" joke right, he made. Yeah, him. that was hilarious. So <laughs> oh there's God. already enough past that they can make this thing work, and so they could make a good fight out of that. That was funny for people that don't know. Chad Mendez said uh, he's like. Do you know? Do you know about wrestling? Do you know about wrestling? <laughs> and Connor goes, "Yeah, I can rest my nuts on your head." <laughs> that shit was hilarious, dude. I mean, well, they're like Aldo and Mendez are not really shit talkers. Like you can tell, too Aldo, fucking yeah. bad. Like, too fucking bad. I think it's too fucking bad that nobody's done it at this point. I think it's too fucking bad they haven't been smart enough. It doesn't fucking matter if you're. I mean, I no, like. But that's what the Irish and the English are very good at is talking shit. Because they do it every fucking day. Let's talk day. some shit, homie. Oh, you're Catholic. I'm <laughs> Protestant. Like, shit like that. They Let's fucking, fucking have yeah. a war. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they fucking go, they yeah man. Like, totally. Mike, is that really, like, for you as a fighter, is that really one of the things that you can see yourself doing when you get to that upper echelon like doing doing some shit talking you know hyping up a fight or he's you just kind of started, he's already about? started i think but i mean he's got to get when he gets to that upper echelon man I mean, it's he's probably different ball game up, but... he's gonna have like 18 cameras on him at that point man mike what do you think about that man yeah, yeah, go ahead. oh i wouldn't change a thing i'm already doing the shit talking thing i'm already uh doing my best to sell like i'm not even from calgary and like it's not unusual for a bunch of people to come just to see me fight. So, <laughs> like in my lap, um, when I beat Ann Helliger, my interview at the end of the fight was, uh, "Hey, uh, and everyone was booing me at first, and I was like, hey, I'm sorry, all of you guys wasted your hard-earned money to see me get my ass kicked, and instead you got to go home with the sour taste of defeat in your mouth.'" <laughs> 
Oh, that's funny, dude. Keeping it real. Keeping it real on the podcast. Uh, yeah, man. I, I think that those are the kind of fighters, though, that really doesn't doesn't matter about anything else. Like, those are really the ones that shine, man. And and well, Chael Sonnen. Chael Sonnen started the whole thing. Yeah, he he yeah. brought in the pro wrestling kind of atmosphere into it, and he did a great job selling it. Yeah. Like um, and as soon as he did that, you know, people didn't know him before he did it. He wasn't making crazy money before he did it. Then all of a sudden, he did it for Anderson Silva, and now he's set for life. The guy doesn't need to fight. Yeah. No, he does. <laughs> he's doing yeah. podcasts and making good money. It, it, well, so. so same thing with Tito. Tito Ortiz was like the original, yeah. original doing it, man. Like bringing wrestling elements in to ufc hyping up a fight like people didn't know yeah. tito like just for fighting they knew him for talking shit and even yeah and I mean, bringing yeah. and hyping up a fight dana white came up with that shirt that said dana white right with those shirts those funny ass yeah. shirts yeah. every single fight yeah Dude. run for us run <laughs> dana dana's my bitch, bitch. yeah <laughs> said like, what the fuck? yeah man uh is that do you have like a good uh, don't give away your game plan do you have a good strategy though as you keep getting these wins have you keep you know, getting these notches on your belt man do you have a good game plan where you're like uh you know i got this i got this promotion tool do you have a, a game plan set for that if not man we got to get you on board we got to help him out man we got to get him a loaded get, social media. Get, get it loaded up mike oh. mike do you have like a good game plan set up for that man i don't know i know this is a crazy question i'm just saying though a, a game plan for uh for sponsors and stuff just good marketing just good marketing i mean Tito had the shirts. Chael had his shit, like his, his bad, ridiculous his shit that he said after yeah. every fight. Connor has everything he does. Connor's Connor. <laughs> Whatever he does, <laughs> like everything he does. His Connorisms. Yeah. My Connorism. plan is, uh, like I do my, uh, like a lot of the people in Calgary just want to hear me, hear my interviews because a lot of them, uh, I get a lot of feedback about how comical my interviews are and how, uh, how entertaining they were. So, the interviews are really good, and uh, it seems like every time I have a fight, I get like another 20, 30 likes on my uh, Facebook page, Caveman Bully. Yeah. So keep that going. Like the Caveman Bully thing is up to over a thousand likes now, so that's decent, I guess. Three and of them are because of us. I just want you to know that. We got you. We got you. Oh man, dude, Mike's fucking funny as shit, man. Well, um. Mike, real quick, man, uh, where can people find you on social media? Where can they find you talking some shit? Can they call 1-800-TALK-SOME-SHIT? Uh, where can they, <laughs> where can they yeah, find you on, online? <laughs> where, can they, uh, where can people see you? Do you have any sponsors you want to shout out, man? Oh, I got CrossFit 807 as a sponsor, Allied Electric, um, uh, Hard Copy Records, Fairbarns Machine Shop, uh, Harborview Optometry, and uh, those are my sponsors. Nice. <laughs> then uh, nice. my wife sells Juice Plus, so if you wanted to get some healthy uh, nutrients in India, set, uh, check out her little, uh, her website and a lot. And um, that's on, uh, well, if you go through my social media, you'll find it. If, if you go to Caveman, uh, Caveman Bully uh, at Facebook, that's my Facebook page, you'll be able to get a hold of me throughout there pretty much easily enough. Uh, I'm on Facebook as well as just Mike O'Neill, so... Yeah. Nice. If you want to find me <laughs> screwing with people, you just got, I guess, got to be around the way it's social sites. <laughs> Are you on Instagram? you on Twitter? you just on Facebook? I just got Facebook. We got to get him a Twitter. Uh, my, wife, him a Twitter. my wife hooked up Skype for me uh, just so I could do this interview, uh, I think, last week. Tell her we said thank you, man. Like, on all honesty, well, we appreciate you, right, right. appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she set you up, right? right. <laughs> Mike, we appreciate Thanks. your time, man. Uh, get to bed. It's like a... You're at like 12.30, 12.50? God damn, it's we've had you on forever, here. bro. Uh, brief That's brief. when my wife was coming in the door. She's probably like, you coming to bed? Uh, I feel neglected. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell her we, th we, we thank her for, for allowing you to come over here, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Mike. Uh, I'll stay in touch with you, Bubba. And we'll, we'll have you on soon uh, after you kick some ass after your next fight. All right, Bubba? All right, sounds good, man. All right, be good, brother. You, you take care, man. Peace. Get loaded Joe's MMA all day. <laughs> I like that right there. there. Boom, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Have a good night, man. Catch you later. That was good, man. Yeah, I, I have him on Facebook. I, I remember, like, uh, he was talking shit on the Connor thing. Want to talk some shit? Yeah, I, I dude. I like Connor because he talks shit like me. I was like, because he talks some trash. <laughs> 
was like, well, I don't like him because he talks so much trash. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the guy. Anyway, man, this is a fucking a loaded <laughs> e- episode right here. Uh, Speaking yeah, of loaded episode, we got one more interview coming up. Matt Jones, everybody, we got Matt Jones. Matt Jones, uh, we're gonna we're, go ahead and, and uh, oh yeah, dude, <laughs> fuck yeah, dude, fucking Mike O'Neill, oh, man, yes, dude, awesome. He got us, got us, got us on there, dude. Uh, oh yeah, I sent him the link today. That's right. I sent. I I was I was so drunk. I sent him the link today, uh, for the show. He was like, "What's the What's the link for the show?" Was I sitting on prize? <laughs> you shoot this prize out, man. Real quick. Look at that. We're okay, we're we're gonna go ahead. Sushi. We're go- <laughs> fries and sushi. We're gonna go ahead and play the interview I did with uh, Matt Jones last night, real quick. Play the uh, so uh, do it. yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do it again. We got Matt Fight Jones on the line. You know he's chilling with us right now. Uh, Fight Jones, let let's hop right into it real quick, man. Know you want to get some shit off your chest. Um, so talk to us about this last fight. Last fight you had, you fought uh Ryan Jensen. Um. Yeah. A couple questions about that fight, man. I, I know he had another opponent lined up before you fought him. How many days notice did you did you have when you took that fight, man? Uh, I don't know, two weeks. A solid, a solid two weeks. So um, I was actually working on getting my weight down for a fight May 29 uh, in Laredo, Texas, and I got a call from uh, Ryan Stutter and uh, Dorothy Falk, and Dorothy's somebody. That had took me out before in Oklahoma with fights, and she told me about it. And the opponent, I mean, Ryan, I think he's 20 and 8 or 21 and 8 now, but he's a UFC or a two time UFC guy, Trevor right. Jackson. Right. It's one of those where, it wasn't, to me, it didn't feel like a losing situation, you know, but I did know going into it that it's not a safe fight, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So going into that fight, man, me and you were kind of talking. You had some injuries. It was was it like too far, like kind of not 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 too far away from the fight, man? Walk us through what happened, you know, prior going up to that fight, man. Yeah. So my um, so I have a full time job as well. I'm an engineer at a hotel, right? And um, what happened was, is my hotel sold, so they sent me out to uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico to work. Oh shit! So that happened like. Uh, I got the notification, I think, on Monday. Okay. Friday, and then I went out of Santa Fe that next day. It was like Wednesday or Thursday. Anyway, I found a team to train with, Santa Fe, DJJ. I went out there, you know, after really, really just working on the weight, got some rolls in, and uh, had a guy in half guard, and he flipped on top of me, and I, I, I displaced my, uh, my rib. So it was a weird situation, man, because that was Tuesday, Lands were that Friday, so that was week of the fight. And fuck, nothing to pull out of the fight, nothing to pull out the week of. You know what I mean? Right. So it created kind of a, of a weird dilemma in my mind, and I talked to the promoter about it, and he had already guaranteed me two more fights. So I mean, he, he knew what was going on. Right. But I told him I didn't want to pull. I just wanted him to know. So if anything did happen, you know, he would understand, or, or at least. Be prepared for that bullshit. Right. Man, that's crazy, though. Well, going into a fight like that, man, and I can't even imagine, you know, like you got you know, probably, you know, a bit more than pressure going into that fight, man. And what's your, what's your head like going in? What's your, what's your head space like walking into that fight, man? Because, you know, what you said, if anything was the biggest issue in that fight, physically, you know, I had the injuries, but I've had injuries before. I think my mindset was kind of in a weird place. It had been, I think, a year almost that I fought last, and I was definitely ready to get back in there, but it was more just like, damn, like, I want this guy, I want the opponent, but I didn't want him at that kind of mishap or that, like, uh, handicap, you know what I mean? Right, yeah, I mean, you'd rather face him, you know, perfect, and in this game, man, we... We we know yeah, every day is you know you can get perfect or you can get not perfect and you kind of got to just you know bite down and and go forward man and uh, you kind of troop it on in there and uh, watching the fight man it, it looked like you were you were holding your own he threw uh, so we're going through the fight right now he threw a like a front kick and it looked like it first off the first one this is the first one he kind of grazed your your nutty buddies man did, did that. And, and the ref didn't stop it. Walk us through right then 
what was kind of going on because you walked away and he threw a punch to the back of your head. Uh, yeah, I'll let you tell the rest from there, but that's kind of to set up the scene right there. Yeah, he kind of he caught me, but it was more like um, the old rule, you know, you never run away or, or do anything stupid while you, unless the ref stops it, you know. His uh, his teeth front kick mixed, whatever the fuck that was, it um it hit the cuff and then went up, and it was kind of a delayed reaction for me because I didn't feel it, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, like I felt it in my stomach. So and I thought the ref stopped because he had said something while I was while I had turned away. Then he never did anything. He never actually stopped it. So then I had to turn around and be like, okay, like, don't get your ass kicked right now. Defend yourself. And right. Yeah. Worked. I saw you kind of like grab on and then you kind of pushed off from the clinch. And he threw another one. <laughs> he threw, he threw an instant play kick and it, hit, it clearly hit the cuff to my upper thigh. And that one, the ref was like, oh, okay, well, he actually said, you know, the first one you got away with, he tells this to, to Jensen, you know, the first one you got away with. But this one, this one counts. And I'm like, okay. I'm the last one, dude. Like, <laughs> last one counts, dude. Right, right. They're both hurt. <laughs> so, what, I mean, is that what the ref told you? Because he kind of pulled you aside. He told you something, and you kind of, like, looked at it. I'm like, what the fuck, bro? And then, exactly. He's like, I, I know he talked to you the first time. Uh, you know, so take all the time you need. And I was kind of like, what? Like, why didn't you stop it the first time? You know, like, it, it messed with my psyche a little bit. Cause he kept throwing those kicks. Right. Which, to be honest, it, wasn't a, it was a good technique because I think he didn't want to go to the ground or grapple with me, which I was surprised to... to I didn't expect a striking match. I expected it to be a, a, a wrestling kind of deal, you know, hanging out in the guard and, and try to ground and pound me the whole time. But, no, he wanted to stand and strike, and it just, it just threw me off, man. It really did. It was right. a good job. It never really worked out 100%. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I feel you, man. I, I, I mean, I can I can see. I'm not a fighter, but I can see just as a onlooker, as an analyst, as a whatever the fuck I am, I see the shit. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah. yeah, man, it's it's definitely... So, I mean, what I'm hearing from you, though, this is definitely something... It, it was definitely something mental, uh, this fight was, you know, more than, more than anything else. This was definitely a, a, a mental... Uh, struggle because you had so many factors kind of going in there. Is that is that kind of would that be a fair assessment, or am I am I completely off base? No, no. I mean, I hate making excuses because it's just like, what's the point, you know? But I know what it feels like to go into a fight completely prepared, and and, and fighting is a lot like any other sport. You know, it's, it's really ninety percent mental and ten percent physical. Like, I mean, in case in point, Conor McGregor, dude. That guy is not physically fucking, you know, he's not Brock Lesnar, but at the same time, Brock Lesnar got his shit handed to him time after time. But <laughs> right. he's very out there, and he, he's fucking dishing out ass with him, doing, to be honest. He really is. What do you what do you think about speaking of my boy my boy Connor my boy Connor that's my boy Connor G McGregor right there Connor G McGregor what do you think about my boy Connor man how do, how do you like him There's people basically you ask them either they hate him either they love him I absolutely dig the guy I'm ten percent Irish don't ask me which ten percent but what do you think about the guy man I think he's every fighter that um, he's the kind of guy you, you almost want to be as a fighter. You know, the, now he's not Muhammad Ali. I, I hope he realizes that, that you can never look back and, and reinvent that person. But if there's anybody that's close to Muhammad Ali as far as saying something and then following through with it, it's him. And I think the way that he talks and the way that he fights, I, I, I think it's all a chat, dude. I don't know. I wouldn't want to fight him because I know that he would piss me off and that would have me fight a totally different kind of fight. <laughs> right. He'd probably fight me. But, like, guys, he's a bad dude, man. And I think, uh, even with Aldo, Aldo's, I mean, come on, look at Aldo. You can never have any regrets or any, like, uh, oh, this may not work out kind of stuff. But if anybody does bring it to him and really see if, if Jose is, is everything he's supposed to be, I think this guy will do it, man. I really do. I think it'll be a, a bit surprising. Everybody will be kind of like, did he really just do that, you know? <laughs> Did you think would you do you think Connor can pull it off in this fight, man? Yeah, dude, I think so. I don't he he may talk a big game and sound like he's he's full of shit as far as 
saying this or that, or acting like he's the best ever. The but man can fight, though. The man can fight, though, man. He's prepared for the fight, dude. He knows what Jose Aldo brings, and everybody sees Jose Aldo fight. He doesn't have, like, a hundred different tricks up his sleeve, you know? He's, he's pretty... You know what he's going to bring. You know what he's going to do. You know what his strengths are. You know what his weaknesses are, and if they exploit him, great, but in, 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 in his favor, he knows that, too. He's like, well, if you can stop me from doing this, then more power to you, but you got to stop me first, you know? Right. Exactly. Exactly, man. That's a good point, man. Well, speaking of, like, the future, I want to see what your struggle is as, as coming up with, you know, fighting on these shows like Victory and, and hitting on Bellator and, and, I mean, you know, getting sponsors and stuff like that. Kind of touch on that real quick, man. The, the whole sponsor game, is, it's not as, uh, it's not very lucrative. Like, you can't go into it thinking you're going to make, I don't know, what are, what, are, what are some of these guys make from Nike, GSP and from Under Armour? Like, you're not going to make that. You know, right. like, uh, we're not the Michael Jordans and LeBron Jameses of, of these guys, but I think you got to be realistic in the approach. You know, like, you don't need, I don't know, $10, $20 a T-shirt, but you do need a good gear to train with. You do need fight shorts so that you can actually show who you're supporting or who's supporting you. Right. You do need a mouth guard. You do need... Uh, Shit like that, you know, things that you're actually going to use. So, with my approach is always was kind of like, you know, I do this, you know, and then you help me with that kind of deal. Um, with the VFS Nutrition, you know, I, I think I blew them up for at least two months before they actually signed on and said, yeah, they helped me out. Uh, with Val and Revolutus, <laughs> I met him at a fight. It was my third fight, third or fourth fight I met him, and he was just starting. So that one probably worked out the easiest. He was just like, dude, Al, whatever you need. And he stayed on board ever since, really, because it was kind of a, a first come kind of deal. Um, everybody else, it's, it's, it's been kind of just hit him up and, and be realistic in my approach, you know, and be consistent. Because I think they get a guy that all the time, hey, can you give me this for free? Well, it's like, what are you giving me? Like, well, why should I give you something? A free mouth guard that's worth $180, you know what I mean? Right. That's a good point, man. Now, do you agree, you know, had this big thing happen, you know, and it's kind of been going up, the, the, that whole fighter, the unionized thing, the ideas out there, that's what UFC is going through, you know, uh, a, a lawsuit for. Uh, do you agree there should be some sort of fighters, as a fighter, do you agree there should be some sort of fighters union uh, that that should happen like there is in other sports. I think that I don't I don't know if there's really a union in other sports, but I think it's uh, the whole idea of a union is too strict and, and creates too many obstacles for any employer to hop on. Like in, in the East Coast, they have unions for you know iron work for a lot of the trade, but those guys need it because of the danger that's involved in their jobs. And, they got to make sure they get paid, especially if they don't make it out at the end of the day, you know. But well, if you stop I, there, I think you just <laughs> described an MMA fighter, man. Don't don't y'all do the same thing? Well, the, the big difference is we don't get paid, you know, on an hourly basis. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they get paid per job, but they make a certain amount of money. They get insured for a certain amount of time, and um, they, they, it's almost more of a lawsuit type deal where it's like. Well, we guarantee you'll get all this, that, and whatever as long as you do your job. As fighters, we train typically two or three times a day. When you have a fight, you're probably training closer to three times a day. You're dieting, you're doing all the things, but it, it's more like you're choosing to do this. You know what I mean? I, I don't have to fight. You know, and I think most guys that do fight, we don't have to. You know, a lot of us, like I went to college, I went to the University of Texas El Paso. I know. Um, I work as, a, as an engineer at a hotel. Like, I don't make, you know, 100000 a year, but I make enough to put a suit on the table, you know? Right. You know, and, and, and honestly, if things were, were great, you know, I would love to just say, I just want to fight for the rest of my life, or at least till I'm, like, 35, you know, make enough money to where I can live happily, invest money, and not have to really worry about working again, but I, I don't know. I'm going to have to go out there and knock out Robbie Lawler. So that's that. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. right, right, right. For you, for somebody to really take it seriously. Now, I, I definitely understand, man. Uh, I think a player association or a fighter's association should be created just so that we can protect some rights. 
but I don't think it should be based on like maybe like a minimum a fighter should get. Like if a fighter has so many fights, he should get a minimum pay of at least this, you know, and then you can negotiate more from there. But this should be, you know, kind of like a minimum wage type deal. The the big issue I think with some is that these guys will take anything when you can fight. Like guys will take if you buy them a damn beer after the fight, some of these guys are just taking it. And I think that's you know, because it, it, it almost belittles the, the pro who's fought 20 times and may have an even record, but he's not he's not making 500000 or even 5000 a fight, you know? But right. he's trying to make enough to cover the two, three months of training that he went through. So it, it, it comes along the same lines of just being realistic. You know, like, we're not going to make, everybody's not going to make at least 10 grand a fight. And I, I think that's, that's almost a realistic number, 10 grand, but you can't pay 20 guys 10 grand, you know? Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it, it's one of those things where you just got to look at all the details, look at all the factors, and, and and see what the numbers come out to you and see what makes sense, you know? But having all these promoters, I don't think helps either, though, you know? I think we do need to kind of nail that down a little bit more. So you've and dealt with that. shady promoters? Honestly, every promoter I've dealt with, I've gotten lucky, is always taking me at the, at the end of the fight. Um, any promoter that... They have had a problem with writing checks to fighters, paid me in cash. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never ran into a situation where a promoter hasn't at least, you know, helped with travel if they couldn't pay for the whole thing. So I've gotten lucky. Even as an Emmy, I got lucky. Right. And uh, there's neither best to, to provide. I mean, they didn't they have to cover everything, but I always had a place to stay before lands and a, stay, stay a place after the fight. And that's really all I could ask for for the most. And it was my choice. You know, I'm going out there. I'm deciding to get punched in the nose for, for you know, a few bucks. Right, right. Well, goddamn, man. That's deep, man, coming from a fighter, man. So, uh, say, so right now, you know, no, no future opponent, but we got fights coming up. So after the fight in May... You've got, you're going to have, did they give you, did they say, you know, you sign up for this fight with Ryan Jensen, we'll give you two more fights after this, we just need this as a favor, we had somebody drop off, was that kind of the deal that I, that I kind of underliningly yeah. heard, is, yeah. that, is that what? Yeah, pretty much, hey dude, we need you to fight, you're the only guy who's got enough experience for it, and we think honestly you can handle yourself in there, so you scratch my back, we're going to do our best to help you out, and um, Ryan Sutter from uh, Victory is a pretty solid cat. Mm. He gave me actually four fights. Uh, my next one will be scheduled with them July 25th back in Omaha, Nebraska. Nice. Uh, again, at Walter Way. Um, he's got a, a direct line in with uh, RSA, uh, Resurrection Fighting. Right, right, right. And so, you know, I kind of have some future plans as far as if I can take out these next three guys, the goal is to, to, to sit with them and say, hey, I want to give a shot at a belt with you. And then I want to talk to RFA and see if I can get some fights with them. And I had to line in with the UFC, you know. And, and in the end, if I can finish my career as a UFC fighter, that's I the would, best you thing know, you can do, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I still got I still got goals and plans, you know. I'm more realistic about it. Like I know that I'm only going to fight for another three, maybe uh, just from the match. I don't want, dude. I'm 32. I don't want to be 36 years old. You know, going out there trying to swing a bunch of haymakers and knock guys out. You know what I mean? Right. You don't want to be Roy Nelson. I got you. <laughs> I got yeah. you, man. Uh, yeah, man. That's a good point, man. Um, well, that's real good. You kind of got like a like a vision, and you kind of have to it at that age, man. I'm getting to that age, man. I'm 26, going on 27 in July, man. I'm starting to starting to get that point where you're just like, okay, well, what's the next few years? What is this gonna bring? And after that, what's the next section going to bring, man? That's that's awesome, man. So, the f- maintaining, staying at welterweight, do you like, is it any different of a, of a day-to-day lifestyle change? I mean, you have a day job, you've got a, you've got a life outside of, uh, of the MMA cage, you know, uh, family, what have you. Uh, how much of this is really does it does it really impact you trying to trying to get to 170? Does it, do you really feel a difference day to day? Yeah, dude. Because um, maintaining the weight after I've been trying to stay closer to like 190, uh, not not get over 200. That's the big thing is to stay under 200 pounds. But uh, you know, when you don't have everybody in the house dieting with you on the same 
kind of meal plan or whatever. <laughs> that shit's hard. Because <laughs> uh, my wife, she, she's all for it, dude. She really is. But, I mean, she's got her moments where she's like, shit, dude, I want to eat some pizza or I want to eat whatever. I'm like, well, I'm not going to force you to eat like me. Because what the hell, dude? That just sucks. Right. She forced the food to get too. So, it's tough, but, I mean, that's kind of part of being a pro. You know, if I say I'm like, I got to make it. And get there it's a lot of cardio too dude running is and the only thing that scares me about running is losing a lot of the muscle mass because at 170 pounds there's a lot of grapplers at that weight right you don't have the weight or the strength then you know you're going to get taken down and you're going to get ridden for you know three four five rounds right so a quick question man because I, I felt fucked off in the game man i saw i thought i knew your your record going into this Ryan Jensen fight. Then I watched the Ryan Jensen fight, and the record's all backwards. What is your real record right now, man? Dude, there was an unsanctioned bout that I fought uh, in, was it Arkansas? I think it was in Arkansas. This was for the pro of my career. And um, I don't know how they found out about it, but they had me at 8-7. and seven. My record is 7-8, mm-hmm. officially. Um, but I had a few unsanctioned bouts that never, never materialized, which I never had a problem with because it was like, you know, didn't hurt either way. Right. But they found out about them and they put them on there. And I think part of it is that they wanted to make it look better, to be honest. Right. If she loses to me, I'm 7-8. It's a big deal, you know. And I was like, oh, it's going to be my retirement fight. And I'm like, yeah, I did it, dude. Whatever. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whatever, man. He's been trying for this fight. And they're fucking... I hate fighting guys when I know I'm not at my best because I hate giving them, like, an easy out. Right. You know I mean? Like, I fucking hate that shit. I mean, that, that's, if anything bothers me and makes me really regret taking a fight and shit like that, he was just fucking beating me. And he, he knew. He knew he had, like, all the chips were kind of pulled the towards him. And I had to pull out a fucking, you know, Hail Mary kind of situation to pull it off. Right. Did did he know about your did he know about your body injury? Because he seemed to be going for that front teeth kick to the body like he knew yeah, something. He, no. Well, did the promoter mind. tell him? Oh god damn, Matt Jones, we got conspiracies and shit. I know, man. That's actually a good uh, a good thing to say, but fuck that dude. I hope he didn't know because dude, I'm telling you, I lost and lost and lost these guys twenty nine fights, thirty pro fights, something like that. And I've watched the majority, as many as I could, as I could find. And he just never threw strikes like that from what I saw. You know, so I don't know. I don't think he knew, but I think he uh, he had an idea of what he wanted to do. And I don't think he wanted to straight stand with me. I don't think he wanted to straight grapple. So he kept it at range. He kept that range, yep. You know, and he threw those fucking kicks, dude, and they were... I feel my ribs. It was like he was sticking his toe into my rib each time. And it was on your left hand side, right? Your the rib that hurt. Uh, yeah. That's the well, one. He, that's the one he kept going for, Bubba. Yeah, dude. And I was I was moving right into it, you know, and uh, it was like slowly chipping away at my confidence, and it kept me at bay, and it, it couldn't throw their way. I couldn't throw the, the strikes I wanted to throw. Cause the goal was to really, you know, box with them. And kind of keep him close and really have to beat up his body a little bit because I know he cuts a lot of weight to make 180. So I don't know, maybe maybe he knew that his body was vulnerable and, and that was the point. I don't know. You never there had a some, you never had a mindset to go in again. I'm not a coach. You never had a mindset to go in though and just try to grind him up against the cage, try to do anything like that. You want to keep it exciting on the feet. Is that kind of was that kind of the plan going in? Yeah, dude, I like to I like to fight kind of um, I don't even know how to describe it. Like Joe Frazier, you know, like put your head down and come forward. You know, right. that's always been kind of my kind of style. But it was hard to really get anything going with him because he just beat away, you know, and he did his job of, of kicking me there in the ribs, and it just he got further and further away as the fight went on. You know that, what I mean? That motherfucker. Fuck it with my boy. I watched this. I watched it so many times already. <laughs> he threw one knee 
That first meeting, I, I blocked it, or it kind of didn't really catch me, but the second one hit me clean between the eyes. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. And then, like, your body, like, did, like, a delayed... I didn't want to bring it up. Your body did, like, a delayed reaction, though. And you kind of looked like you, you, you felt it, and then, like, two seconds later, you kind of just... It kind of just went down, man. No, dude. I, yeah. I, I remember the shot. I remember everything about it. And I remember taking that step and my foot just didn't agree with the rest of my body and just kept moving inward. And then when I went down, my like I collapsed to my knee and then I kind of was just like, oh, fuck. And I know part of me was kind of like, I didn't want to be a hero and try to like grind out a win or, or go to a decision just because. So I know my body was like, dude, like let's not take any to take this shit over and it was a clean shot it right it really was i think um my mental standpoint was kind of like dude we're not gonna we want to live to fight more so let's let's be smart about let's it let's be smart about it yeah that's a good point man well it's that time of the show again uh you've done this we've all done this oh uh, not me but every one of our guests has done this uh we've got 15 random ass questions we've got a new 15 come so <laughs> random ass questions uh, the, we got the R-A-Q. What's that now? The RAQs. The, the RAQs, boy. You already know, man. All right, we got the new, we got the new random ass questions. Uh, we've got the timer on the clock, and uh, we're just gonna hop right into it real quick, Matt Jones. So, uh, all right, number one, uh, favorite rapper. Uh, uh, most Def. Most, most Def. That's a good one. All right, favorite sport. Uh, women's volleyball. What? For obvious. All right. <laughs> I guess that's a good one. Uh, uh, dream job. Oh man. Uh, honestly, I'm always in school for civil engineering, so building bridges, things like that. Um, I don't know what exactly I would call myself, but that's that's that would be my dream job. I just I just love doing that kind of shit. Nice, nice. All right. Favorite cartoon growing up. Oh. Uh, um, I guess the Ninja Turtles, man, to be honest, because I watched the hell out of those Oh, bad yeah. Movies. That's a good shit right there. All right, so if you were a ring <laughs> announcer, what would your tagline be? Oh, man. It, it, uh, <laughs> I would, that's all she wrote, but I think it's like it's not over to the family he sings, because that's kind of how I fight, man. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. All right, who's the most famous person that you've met? Um, uh, do the good one. Uh, shoot. Uh, who did I mean? To be honest, I, I have to be like a fighter. I met T.J. Waldberger. I met um Robbie Lawler. Oh, nice. TV, you know, about a year ago. So I guess to be fighter, Robbie Lawler would probably be the best one, most famous. Nice, nice. All right. Um. Uh. Okay. All right. So, uh, favorite beer. I'm drinking a Modelo right now, but <laughs> any, any seasonal beer, because I'm a big fan of seasonal beer. You're a big fan of seasonal beers, like Boston, like uh, uh, Sam Adams has, has a lot of seasonals, and uh, that's nice, man. You got, you got China seasonals. You got oh, a yeah. Bunch of Those are good seasonals right there, my friend. We're on the same page. All right, what kind of animal is your warrior spirit? Oh, man, it's got to be a wolf, because, dude, I've always been kind of like, don't do this kind of shit, but then I do it anyway, dude, just to see what the outcome will be. <laughs> All right. Uh, if your movie, if your life is turned into a movie, uh, who would play you? And hopefully Vin Diesel, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man, that dude's cool, and he always gets the chick, and they're always hot. So, so like, definitely Vin Diesel. That's just funny. The, the, our last guest said that, too. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy just, he does it right, man. He even makes his right on movies and stuff. Fucking funny, man. I, I, that'd be okay with The Rock playing you. That'd be okay. All right, what is the movie rated? Oh, man. Uh, PG-13. I got I to gotta dog it. man. So. Oh, man. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. All right, well. <laughs> Somebody's getting fucked in the mouth. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, quick. Okay, number 11. What season... In the year is the best season for some whoopee. What season is the best season for some whoopee? Yeah, optimal whoopee season, my friend. Oh, man. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Any day, all day, dude. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good one. All right, uh, Bob Sapp or James Thompson, 
who could you fight off in a rape situation? Dude, I used to be a Bob Sam fan when he was a straight kickboxer. Uh huh. And I don't know, dude. Both, I met James Thompson. I said on my uh, fought on a Velcro card with him. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, I would. I would rather not fight these old guys, dude. Too. I think they would either just stop fighting or just want to get paid and leave. So who who are you choosing? What are you doing? That was my son, man. Oh, no worries, no worries. So who are you choosing, Bob Sapp or James Thompson? Which one do you think you could fight off in a rape situation? Uh, Bob Sapp. Dude. Bob Sapp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hottest MMA fighter? Uh, um, Jessica Ivy. Oh, yeah, she's a good or She's a good-looking one. Ugliest I'm MMA fighter? She's a fighter, I think, um, do you know what I mean? Ugliest MMA fighter. I don't know, because if they hear this, and then I have to deal with them, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say nobody, man. I don't feel like having any problems with it. You know what? Ryan Ford, dude. That's the ugliest MMA fighter. Oh. That's what I'm going to say, because me and that cat, I don't know, man. I just feel like I got a bit of a, a destiny to fight that dude. We'll get into that right after 15 random ass questions real quick. All right. Last question. MMA fighter, you could for sure take into a fight. Uh-oh. You could for sure take in a fight. Who? Which MMA fighter is that? Dude, Ronda Rousey, dude. Without a doubt. Come on. You could for sure take Ronda Rousey in a fight. Hell yeah, man. Because, dude, that's like a no-lose situation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shoot. I'll be fine, man. You might keep my butt down here, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. That does it. I thought you were gonna say Ryan Ford on that one. What? Who uh, that? Ford, dude, we've got a. I don't know what it is. Like originally, it was just me just talking crap to see what would happen. And I just I don't know, man. I feel like I do feel like I could beat that guy. I think I could beat him on my worst day or my best day. I he, just you got heated over that podcast, my friend. We so we for all those out there, we did a podcast back in. Early January, uh, our Canadian brethren, uh, uh, you know, in the in the made up country of Canada, uh, Ryan Ford got a bit perturbed at the uh, comments made by our buddy Matt Jones. Matt Jones, you got a message out there for uh, for Ryan Ford? And all I know is that, like the guy, the guy's a fighter, you know, and he started just like I did. There's somebody who decided they wanted to throw down and make some money doing it, and he said he wanted to fight. I know that I have at least the record that I could go out there and try to fight something. So I thought it would be cool, you know, to see how he responds to it. But him calling me a nobody and saying Matt Jones who, that's just like, you get the fuck out of here, dude. Like, one, that's some stupid shit because that whole Matt Jones who shit, you might as well go back to what is it, 90, what was it, 90 something or 2000 when uh, old boy used to say Mike Jones who. Like, that's just some dumb shit. Right. That, that's what we. I think got under my skin. And he's not this old. Like, I've watched some of his fights. I've seen the guys he's fought. He's fought some bad dudes, but he's also fought some guys that, that just weren't, shouldn't have been in the cage with him, you know? So I know that I can hang with that cat. And I know that after, after hanging with him, that I would beat him. And then we could talk about it afterwards. But he's just a guy that I would I'd much rather punch him in the face than shake his hand, man. <laughs> That's I, funny, I, I, man. I, I, that's as clean as I can put it, dude. And the first guy that I've ever dealt with, where I'm kind of like, I want to fight this guy. Right. Everybody's kind of like, hey, I'm going to fight you. A contract is a fight, but I fight this motherfucker for free, dude. <laughs> I don't Do you think it's funny that he popped out of his uh, fucking fight with uh, Yushin Okami? No, man. I don't I don't follow that cat like that. Cause I don't want to fucking say something and then have some more of this bitch talk about who are you and, and I did this and find someone else to make your name off of. Like, no, man, and, and he has no business fight Yushin Okami anyway, dude. That cat's huge, and he's going to destroy him at 170, so I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm almost angry just to talk about him right now. There we go. Well, we'll, we'll hop on to the next subject, man. We'll just we'll step off of, off of that, man, but we, we know where it stands with that. Uh, so, Matt Jones, uh, uh, you know, going on, we've got the fights going on. We've got fights coming up. Uh, what event... Are you most excited for that? That's coming up. I know we talked about the fights, but what event, like full event, 
Uh, we've got that one coming up on Saturday, the Rockhold Machida fight. Uh, that, that, I know it's not welterweight fighting, but both of those guys, um, I've been training with uh, Bobby Southworth down here in San Antonio. He's part of AKA. He's pretty, he knows um, Luke Rockhold. He said they're pretty cool. Bobby Southworth, I, wasn't he on a, a, a season of Ultimate Fighter? Uh, Southworth, yeah, he was on uh, season one, man. It yeah, was, was I remember no. him. For the ones that uh, put water on, uh, uh, what's his name, his uh, pillow and shit, mess with old boy. Uh, uh, Chris Lieben's pillow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, a cooler, he's a lot cooler in person than that portrayed in the video, man. He's, he's, a, he's an alright guy. That's always with that's always with reality TV though, man. Uh, you know they that's that's always the case, man. Yeah, that's but, um, cool. That, that fight, and really, just those two guys. I just really want to see that fight happen. I, I think that's going to be a much better fight than it's leading up to be. I know the team has been there before. Luke Rockhold has been like finishing everybody lately, but I think it's just going to be a really cool fight. I think they're both going to get a little beat up and. I think Machida's going to pull it off. More probably because I just like Machida more, but he's got, he's got more seasoning to him, you know, so he just presents a, a hard fight for anybody. Right, exactly. Some interesting fights going on, but I think that's kind of going to wrap it up for us tonight. Uh, Matt Jones, do you have any shout-outs, any sponsors? Where can people find you? Uh, let everybody know. The the website's still the same, fightjones.com, uh, Facebook, Fight Jones, Twitter, Fight Jones 3, all that good jazz. Um, but none other than Loaded Kills themselves, man. This podcast has been consistent and great with me since, oh, shoot, we're going on a year and a half or something like that now. So, it's been, I don't know. I it's been like four months. <laughs> it's the respect, dude. That's what it comes down to because in this sport, you either have it or you don't. And really, that's all it's about. I mean, you can make as much money as you want, but if you don't have that, that loyalty or that respect from your, your fellows, then, I mean, what are you really worth? You know what I mean? That's right, man. I appreciate that. Uh, as always, good catching up with you, brother, and I uh, want to wish you a great rest of the day, great rest of the week, man, and uh, you have a good weekend, brother. I need you, boy. All right, man. appreciate it. And that was the uh, – that was the, the – interview with matt fight jones Did that, just happen? that just happened man we had just happened uh, it was a good interview man he had a lot to say got a fight coming up on uh on on may 29th he's got two more fights with victory um i'm excited to see him come back i'm excited for all of our guests man we had emmanuel newton we had fucking mike o'neill who is just just a just a darling of a guy just just a pretty hilarious just man. a real hilarious guy <laughs> Uh, if I ever did see one in my life, uh, and, and and Matt Jones, oh, am I leaning on something? Uh, and and Matt Matt Jones, man, we we want to thank uh, all of our guests, um, and find each and every one of them on on the Twitters and the Instagrams and the Twittergrams and the Twitter feeds and every feed and everything and uh, yeah, like uh, go follow them, go do that. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead. Well, yeah, we got to we got to throw out. Uh, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor, uh, Fight Book MMA all day. You're all day, er day. Need some MMA? Go to Fight Book MMA. FightBookMMA.com. Big shout out to them, man, for for having us and, and hosting us. Uh, real quick, kind of to wrap it up, we got uh, the the fights tomorrow. Uh, Fox on uh, on. Uh, Fox on Fox. Fox on Fox, UFC on Fox, Fox 15. Whole lot of foxing. Girl! A <laughs> uh, whole lot of foxy ladies to start the fight off, am I right? <laughs> hey! Uh, we <laughs> uh, all right, let's go through the fight card real quick. Main card, Paige Van Zant, Felice Herrick. Uh, who's everybody taking around here? Felice I'll take Felice Herrick all day. Old line. Old line, Dude, buddy. Old line, Old line buddy. <laughs> She's just catch yeah, she's, I think it's just an experience that Felice has. Too, I mean, too, young, like she's too much in her ego, not in a fight. Yeah, um, twelve gauge, not shotgun, you asshole. Shot- <laughs> <12 gauge shotgun. laughs> like, same difference. Call him Mossberg. <laughs> twelve gauge page, I think is is what she. Uh, twelve gauge shotgun page. Twelve gauge shotgun. <laughs> Change the shit. Change her fucking name. <laughs> Didn't give a fuck about that. She's got a new name. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm taking Felice. Take a Felice with a with a sub or or decision. 
Um, next fight, we got uh, it's the Max Holloway, bro. Max Holloway, bro. You know, it's from Hawaii and shit. Uh, Max Holloway versus the, the he trains in New Jersey. No, well, no, some shit about New Jersey and Max Holloway. I forgot what the fuck they're, they're fighting out of New Jersey tomorrow. If that's okay, what, you... okay, so... what an asshole, dude. Doesn't know anything. No, I, Why I, he's I, a co host. <laughs> 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 He's a Hawaii, bro. <laughs> Why is he there? <laughs> Why is he there even? <laughs> they, they fucking screwed me. They confused me. Anyways. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Max Holloway, yeah. Fighting Cub Swanson. What does everybody think about that fight? I'm going for Cub on that one right there. What do y'all think? Man, I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, I, just, I just don't think that he, uh, he, he... Cub doesn't look himself right now. I don't know. At least from the pictures I've seen of them, like, with the stare off. It just doesn't... Like too much. I, I I think he could go either way. I, I I'd like to see Max Holloway put off the win. I mm -hmm. think he can, but think I'm not going to be disappointed if Cub does either. Like I, I coming maybe. off that that Frankie Edgar that Frankie Edgar loss right That's, there, yeah, I mean, he got yeah. dominated. I don't think he's getting dominated oh, yeah, this yeah. fight. I think his stand up is is going to be superb. Uh, Max Holloway throws a dynamic strike so like, easily, easily you throws. Fries? <laughs> easily, I don't want no fries, man. Want fries? I don't want no fries. <laughs> Easily, 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 uh, you know, gonna gonna have some some good technique. There is Max Holloway, you know, throwing all kinds of spinning shit and knees and elbows, and he's just so unique and dynamic. I, I'd like him to fight Conor again. I'd I'd like to see that fight. I, I don't think it'd be. I wouldn't be upset. Uh, but I mean, I yeah, I'm I think I'm going for for Max Holloway for tomorrow. But I'm not gonna be upset if Cub wins. Uh, next fight, Chris Camozzi, Jacare. And Jacare. Jacare already beat Chris Camozzi like in one minute with like fucking choke. I think he can do it again. Or it was like a triangle. It was a body triangle. Uh, what the fuck am I talking about? Um, who, who's everybody going for this fight though? Jacare. Yeah, I'm going for Jacare. All Jacare all around the table. Jacare all the way. Jacare all the way. Uh, you got the Jacare all the way. And then our final fight. The Yodo Son. The Yodo Son. got to go for that dragon. Versus... Man. Uh, Rock Lukold apparently to uh, people who get no, too Lux, too many no. smokes, hey, no, get too many highs. Not knock Rock Hold's ability, but <laughs> I think Machida's yeah. got that one, man. Yeah, I, it's gonna be it's gonna be a great stand-up fight. Let's put it that way. It's gonna be a hell of a stand-up fight. He had wide, man. I mean, like, he turned it on a little too late, but yeah, he fucking turned it on. He turned it on, on the last minute. He's like, dragon right there. one minute left. Oh shit. I started just knocking him out, man. Know, just going man, for the swing from the fences. Those elbows. That's what it was. Yeah, he'd be devastating. If he would have just done that, maybe the second or third round. I, I don't understand why people don't use their elbows like Matt Brown and John Jones. John like, Jones. They're fucking crazy. John Jones, a master oh. of the elbows, still in the elbow jabs. Elbow jab. Look, look what happened recently when fucking Krokov. Uh, Krokov oh, Krokov. Yeah, yeah man. Fucking fuck that dude up. Destroyed. I mean, put down Gonzaga. Yeah. Busted his face open. So that Twitter pic he posted the next day. Just saw that scar running down the middle of his face. Right. What happened? No, no, no. Everything's good. Everything's okay. good. Keep talking, everybody. Uh, but yeah, I'm going for uh, uh, Miyoto Lachita on this one. Miyoto? <laughs> Miyoto. <laughs> He's on Miyoto. He's <laughs> a Miyoto. There's a Miyoto, too. He's got another butter. <laughs> because of Mr. High So Smoked over here. Oh. Uh, yeah. Called Rock Luke Hold and bullshit. Yeah, progressively worse. I didn't talk. My bad. <laughs> 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 just kidding. I'm going for Leota Machida. I think yeah. he takes the win. I think he's fought in big, big guys just the same as what uh, Luke Rock Hold uh, presents to him, and uh, uh, I, I think he's going to be more as dynamic as ever, man. You know, and and landing a lot of good strikes. I think the way he wins though is either going to be decision, um, or I, I, I I'm calling it now okay. punching, punching yeah. Yeah. with punches, a KO with punches, I mean, like, like just like landing it like out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's real quick too. Like, <sighs> when they saw, when he fast. Fucking Rashad, man, those punches were flying like fucking crazy from both of them. <laughs> That shit was fucking epic. That's what sold me on Machida was that fucking fight when he won the championship. But I, what, I don't understand. So many we people are trying to that, count man. Machida out. It, it, I, I, yeah, I've, I've been seeing some of the other, like, other, maybe new sites. 
And a lot of the a lot of the people on there are, are voting Rockhold to win the fight. Like not too many people bigger, are going to... you know what I mean? Don't mean shit. You know. You like, know, Luke Rockhold is fucking big. And I said it right this time, like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Rock Luke, Luke Rock Luke Cole. <laughs> Producer Thanks, Bud remembers. Bud. Thanks. Uh, Luke Rock Cole's little midget brother. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely go for Machida. I think Machida can, can pull it off. Machida son. Um and so that's kind Machida of the best. concluding Machida the best, Machida you know, it's pretty good. Uh, It'll be J <laughs> I I think uh uh you know he's gonna he's gonna shut down the show with that. Um for the, for that ep- for this episode, man, this kind of this kind of wrapping it up. Uh, any by Felicia's? Any by Felicia's for this week, man? By Felicia. Producer Bud says. Bye Felicia. By Felicia who? You know who? By who? Who signed with Bellator? Oh. 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 <laughs> Phil Davis. Mr. Mr. Bellator now. <laughs> Mr. Bellator. <laughs> Mr. Bellaforce. <laughs> Bellator fool. <laughs> he said bye Felicia to Phil Davis. Yeah. Uh, Felicia. He did not beat Machida, did I? Don't, I don't give, give him that fight. Neither did Rampage. Did did nothing. Did nothing. You want to see Shotgun Page? There's so many Shotgun. I think that fight's not really fair, but all right. No, yeah, they just want to see Rampage versus Shogun again. I think that's why they gave it to him. But you know, that's just me. Conspiracy and shit. Right. All, conspiracy, All yeah. conspiracies to John Miller. He thinks everything's a conspiracy. Um, <laughs> I, I think it'll be it'll be a good fight. Uh, so one more time, bye Felicia to who now? Phil Davis. Phil yeah. Davis. Bye Felicia. Hey, nah, hey. Huh. You gotta buy. You gotta Felicia. buy Felicia this this week. It's every it's every episode's a buy Felicia. Did anyone piss you off this week, coworker? Nah, man, it's all about fight. It's not about work, man. Hey, well, I you <laughs> said you, 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 you said anybody. That one bitch at work. Look, let me tell you. Let me tell uh, you a story. Yeah, man. I mean, we might have mentioned last week. I'm not sure if one of us needed to buy police also, but uh. I guess by police officially to Brock Lesnar, and he's never coming back. By Felicia. Uh, yeah, that's a, good. You can't do a same by Felicia they, last week, man. I, I don't, I'm saying, I don't think booty. anybody did bring it up. I'm just saying. Yeah, they did. They did? Yeah, somebody brought it up. I forgot. Damn. <laughs> it probably was me. No, it was me. It was, I was you. Talking I shit. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, my <laughs> bad, my <laughs> bad. <laughs> uh, by Felicia to, uh, to him. My by Felicia this week uh, is going to go um, to... Who would my bye Felicia go to? Probably Melvin Gillard. I should probably send him a bye Felicia. Bye Felicia. He's not going to be with World Series of Fighting too much longer. He keeps his oh, shit up. Oh, he's fucking up. He's fucking oh, up, a, dude. Yeah, that's a good point, dude. He's not, he's, not, he's not headed on the right road, man. And nobody really wants him because he, he's fucked around too many times, man. Uh, he, he, I don't know, man. Maybe bye Felicia to our boy Melvin Gillard. No. May, he, uh, may his career in World Series of Fighting rest in peace. Uh, that's my, <laughs> that's my, that's my bye, Felicia, for this week. Uh, well, you heard it here. Bye, Felicia. A loaded Joe's MMA, another episode, man. This shit went, shit was amazing. Shout outs to Manuel Newton, uh, Mike O'Neill, mm-hmm. Matt Fight Jones. You can find them all on Twitter, Facebook. Uh, actually, yeah, Twitter, well, kind, not Twitter for not, not Mike O'Neill. Don't look for him on Twitter. You're, you're going to find some creepy yes. guy with a beard and, and an ice cream truck that you don't <laughs> even want to be by. Uh, um, but yeah, like, uh, yeah, just look for them on social media, find them at your nearest MMA fight next to you, uh, buy some tickets, check them out on TV. Uh, we appreciate every one of our guests for coming on again, find yep. us on fightbookmma.com. Uh, what's that? What's that website again? Tom Miller? FightbookMMA.com. Jordan, what's that site I always go to for uh, latest news? FightbookMMA.com. Are you sure? You sure, Jordan? Uh, I think so. Is that the website? That's the website I go to. That's the web- Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's got to be the same one you do. <laughs> if you want to call me, Miller, you ain't going to get up on that, bitch. I know, right? Get, get on that shit. MMA all day, every day. That's FightbookMMA.com. Fight uh, check them out. Just find us on Stitcher, iTunes, Twitters, uh, YouTube. Uh, find us, uh, you know, uh, inside your mama's closet where your daddy doesn't know. Loaded. Uh, loaded. <laughs> All loaded. <laughs> loaded Joe's MMA Joe's. podcast. Uh, we love you. You love us. 
And uh, we appreciate your time. It's me, Money Blakeweather, John Mills, a.k.a. John Miller, um, and our boy JV, producer Bud over here making bird noises earlier. We thank him. Thank everybody for your time. Uh, check us out next episode. Hopefully we have it just as loaded as this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, growing. Growing. Growing, dude. Exponentially. Growing like a good wheat plant, man. Thanks to Fight Book MMA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, that's where you can find I'm just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you. Uh, everybody, have a good night and uh, peace. Peace.